It's like you can replay little Nintendo, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. You gonna play some Call of Duty? Is that what we getting ready to do? <laughs> I did uh, pre-order the new one, so I'm pretty stoked, man. What's the What's the new one? I haven't really paid much uh, attention. Modern Warfare 2 is the new one that comes out in like a week, uh, but I pre-ordered it so I can play the campaign, and uh, I haven't had a chance to do it yet. But is it gonna be um, modern weapons or is it? Yeah, throwback stuff. Yep, it's modern weapons. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Yep. I, uh, so normally I have, uh, fake guns in my office, because my office is locked. So I, uh, went to the armory and, and, uh... Got some real deal? Guns. Got some real guns, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Just for us leadheads, we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One of them's kind of crooked, though. Got the real Probably stuff. <laughs> All right, you got any questions before we hop on this, get started? Like I said, man, we're just going to play it by ear. So. This is a dynamic show. It's That's right, man. unscripted. Right. Yep, I like it. We are unscripted here at the Talking Lead Podcast. Yep, yep. Ten sure. years of educating the uneducated, Leadheads. <laughs> Since 2012. Uh, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. <laughs> I, uh, honestly, man, the first podcast that I did... And stop me if I told you the story already. No, go ahead. But the first podcast I did was uh, with Fred Eichler. You know who he is? I don't. Tell me. Uh, so he, if you ever watched like the Outdoor Channel, he's like the go-to guy on the Outdoor Channel for like the past 20 years. Um, he's killed every big game species uh, in North America and maybe in Africa with a longbow. With a long so bow. Kill, yeah, yeah. So he's killed like a grizzly bear and like crazy, crazy Water stuff buffaloes like, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, with a freaking long bow, man. So, Has he done uh, like the big, what is the big, uh, is it yeah, the yeah, yeah, seven yeah. or yeah. something like that? Yeah, 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 yep. And then he has like every, every species of uh, like sheep. You know, it's like all the different crazy mountain goats and stuff mm-hmm. like that he's gotten with a longbow. And What's his name? He's a, Fred Eichler. So, okay, I think I've heard of him. I've just never watched. Yeah. yeah. Watched I'm not show. a big hunter, honestly. Uh, so I hadn't really watched too much of his stuff. Uh, but just like hearing these crazy stories of him, you know, hunting, you know, especially the bear story with a longbow, man. It's just, it's crazy to hear oh, that I'll stuff. Bet. So I did a podcast with him and because I was out at his ranch in Colorado and he handed me this headset and I sat on the couch. And he literally just like put his, lay down on the couch, put his feet up and we just like <laughs> talked for an hour, you know, just like him and I were, had just talked, you know, the, the couple days before that I was been there, it was no different, you know, yeah. just him and I just shooting the shit and it was a lot of fun. I was like, man, these, this podcast thing is pretty cool. <laughs> it was hey, a lot of fun. It's so. yours to do with what you want. You know, everybody yeah, does man. it a little differently, sure. I guess. For sure. Yeah. Yep. But that's so. the way we do it here, man. We're unscripted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're from the hip. Um, yep. I have awesome people like yourself on. I have the experts. I'm not the expert, uh, but I get the experts on to talk about. Yeah, and, and educate yeah. me because this, you know, it's about me. I'm selfish. This show's about me and, <laughs> and me, what I want to learn, what I want to know about. That's not true. Yeah. That's not yeah. true. I, I listen to our lead heads. I, I get their feedback. Right. But I mean, that's part of being in the industry, right? Is like the stuff that you want to know, know about and the stuff you want to learn about is the same stuff that your listeners want to learn about. You know? Well, so you know, you hope that it's you a, hope. Yeah, right. a shared yeah, interest. Right, I guess, you know. Uh, so. Sometimes I get some feedback that's not so favorable to <laughs> <laughs> to some of the stuff I have on, but that's all right, man. Well, you know, you can't you're please never make everybody happy. Yeah, you can't yep. please all the people all the time. So right, right. I, yeah. I try to at least uh, be diverse. That I'm getting a little something for everybody. Yep, uh, for sure, man. For all our like listeners, it. try to fill the gaps. Yeah, uh, yeah. But like I said, you know, this is our our 10 year anniversary of the Talking Live podcast. <laughs> Yeah, man, and that's it's, crazy. it's all due to our listeners, and we really appreciate our listeners here at the Talking Lead Podcast, and we value your feedback and your comments. If you want to get in touch with me, talkinglead at gmail.com is the email address. Don't go to the website and contact me through the website. I have a lot of people that do that, and 
I don't get those messages. A lot of them go to like spam or something, and and I'll see them weeks later um, because I don't check that very frequently. So talking at gmail.com or on the uh, the grams. uh, I've been more active on the like the instant messaging, direct messaging stuff. Uh, So I have been paying attention to that a little more than I used to. So uh, that would be a good place. Don't do Facebook. Uh, I rarely do anything on Facebook. It used to be where I could post something on Instagram. It would automatically post on Facebook. But for some reason, it's not doing that now. So I don't know. You lost your link between the two, probably. I, you know, I've looked and it says everything's still linked up, but I got this nasty little message from them a few months ago that said I was yeah. in violation of some of their uh, their policies and classic, classic. Uh, Facebook, yeah, I think they put me in jail uh, for a while, so that might have yeah. something to do with it. I don't know, but well, you're not doing something right if you're not in Facebook jail at least every once in a while. So. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm doing something right, I guess. Uh, hopefully, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Leadheads, welcome back to another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Uh, if you didn't get an opportunity, if you're listening to this one, uh, I think it's this episode is 458. Make sure you go back to our previous episodes and check those out. We had an awesome episode on on bows and arrows and uh, bow hunting, specifically crossbows. I got a new uh, Centerpoint Archery Wrath 430X and... Um, I'm hiding my background for you video uh, watchers right now uh, because I'm, I'm going to do a reveal of what we're talking about. But uh, you can see my guest. My guest, I'll go ahead and introduce him. Brian Steer with Lockdown. He, this is his this is your second or third time on the show? Uh, second. Your second yeah. time, yeah. yeah we yeah, did. The first uh, one was the uh, reloading, intro to reloading uh, podcast, which was awesome. That's right. So, and, you know, speaking of talking about different stuff, you know, that was one of our first reloading episodes that we did. And, Brian, I got a lot of good feedback on that. There was uh, people that were really thankful that I did that episode, and they learned a lot. Uh, hopefully, you know, they got in touch with you and uh, gave you some feedback on that too. Yeah, man, I got lots of DMs on uh, Instagram and uh, a couple people, you know, asking some more questions. And yeah, you know, I, I love teaching people about reloading. I have a, uh, I'm a metallic reloading instructor for for the NRA, so. I wouldn't go through all that if I didn't enjoy teaching it. So you are an expert. That is for, uh, that is for certain. Yeah. I got the paper at least <laughs> <laughs> more than I am. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but as I was saying, I'm hiding my background, uh, but you can see what we're going to be talking about behind Brian. This is a product. It's called secure walls that they're going to be releasing, releasing soon. Um, I know a lot of you, when I made that post were, Hey, we can't get it. It says it's sold out on their website. Well, it's coming, and it's coming. and it, there's there's a probably be thankful that you weren't able to buy it then because we've got something special that we're going to announce toward the end of the show that'll make it even more advantageous for you when you when they are available and you do go buy them. Yeah. Yep, sure do, man. <clears throat> I probably could have said that a lot easier a different way, but <laughs> <laughs> nah. that's what you get for being unscripted. That's all right, man. We're rolling with it. Uh, but we're going to talk about different ways to display, mount your your firearms, your kit, your gear, your tools, whatever it may be. Uh, and then uh, we're going to read your questions. I know that a lot of you had posted questions. Answer your questions and your comments. And we're going to talk about some other products, too. And then we're going to pick some lucky winners where Brian has put up a couple of awesome prizes for you leadheads. And tell them what uh, what we're going to be giving them toward the end of the show here to two lucky ladies. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do a gun concealment magnet and a magnum magnet, and those are our uh, legacy products that we've had for a long, long time. Uh, I think the magnum magnet was one of the first products that I designed when I first started at Lockdown. So oh, this is your design, uh, huh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So nice. uh, the magnum magnet has four magnets in it. Um, and it holds up to 75 pounds, so it's going to be hard for you to get those far. <laughs> yeah. They're tough, but I can do it. Um, I got practice. So yeah. So you can hang uh, rifles and shotguns on those, and then the gun concealment magnet is the smaller one, the little two-pot one, and that one works really well for pistols. Um, I was actually reading a review from a guy the other day. He said he cut a magnum magnet in half because it was too strong, and uh, he, he cut it in half. Yeah, he cut it in half. I'm like... 
we sell the, <laughs> the two part one too, but you know, that's what that's he gets right. for not, uh, looking at your website. Right. Right. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, there's the, the magna magnet and then, uh, the gun concealment magnet is there too. Yep. yep. Got it yep. right here. So, yep. Yep. So, so that's one, one lucky listener is going to get that set of prizes, the magnets. And then yep. for yep. another one, we're going to give away. Yeah. So, uh, I guess just a little background on me. I was the engineer for lockdown for five years. So, uh, most of these products, uh, I designed. Um, so actually this is one of my favorite ones that I did. Uh, so yeah, this is our little digital hygrometer. So then talk about what that, what the use of that is. Yeah. So basically you put it on the inside of your safe and, um, it's got, you know, a little stand or it's got magnets on the back. Uh, right there and so you put that on the inside of your safe and then the screen will show um you know what the temperature and the and the humidity is nice and so there's there's obviously too high humidity you know if you get too high then uh you start to develop corrosion and rust on your right. firearms or your uh, but ammo. also if you get too low it can be bad for your wood stocks if you've got some older guns um that have wood stocks getting too low of humidity can also have an adverse effect on them as well. So you want to keep your humidity right around 40, 50%. And, uh, we carry a lot of products at lockdown that, that can help you do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of those is the dehumidifier rod, which is this little guy. There it is. Nice. So the dehumidifier rod basically, uh, heats up the air that's around, uh, around it. And so you put it inside of your safe, it slightly elevates the temperature inside the safe, and that in turn keeps uh, humidity from sticking to the firearms. So, um, and nice. then we've got a product that we're launching uh, next year that is basically the dehumidifier rod, the new puck, and a smart plug, and we're calling it the Logic Humidity Control Kit. All and in one? Will allow you... Yeah, yeah, all in one kit. Oh, oh, one kit. So you get all those products in one kit, or is it? Yes. Okay, yep. nice. Yep, yeah, and so that allows you to have the puck that actively monitors it, and you can view it on your phone as opposed to, you know, having it on a screen like this little guy. And then um, when you when it detects that humidity is too high, you can turn on the plug, turn on this dehumidifier rod, turn it on. Then when it gets to the right level, you turn it off with your phone. So it uh, basically turns this product and this product into a smart product that you can use uh, from your phone. So, but uh, this is a really awesome combo to make sure you're monitoring humidity in your safe right now. So, yeah, a valuable, valuable tool now. For sure. Um, and you weren't on this episode, but we had uh, Ronell on several episodes last yep. year, uh, yep. and uh, you can see he's right there. I had I got one of the pucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got it, and I, I went ahead and turned my background off, so I re, I've revealed my my wall. Uh, it's been up for a while now, and the leadheads have seen it, but I haven't really talked a whole lot about it. I've just kind of been teasing it. Uh, I know, man. I love that. I was watching, uh, I think it was two episodes ago, and you kind of had it in the background, and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, I've redone it a little bit since the last, I guess, last episode, um, but uh that's the great thing about it is very conf configurable. We're going to talk about that. I got my, I had my crossbow on there. You can oh, see yeah. that's nice, my 430 X, the one I was talking about earlier. There you go. Right there. So, um, but yeah, we're going to talk about that, uh, the secure wall. And we're going to talk about those other products and what's coming with, with lockdown. And we want to talk about our training that we've got coming up at Gunsight yeah. too. That's going to be, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Me too, man. Me too. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we've got this little thing that we do. It's called the Planes and Trains segment, Brian. And I think we might have done it on the reloading episode. I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to we're gonna kind of kind of touch our toes into it this week. I don't have a lot of jack wagons, uh, but we do have a hero that we definitely want to honor here. So, yep. Gunny, bring that train in. Hey, Rob, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week. So brace yourself, baby. All right, the train has stationed. And I don't really have a jack wagon, but I guarantee you there's probably some jack wagons that we need to be uh, talking about this episode. Yeah. 
So, Leadhead, you got to keep me up to date on this. It's hunting season. I'm out in the woods most of the time. I'm not keeping up with anything. So, email me when you hear about a a jack wagon. Don't don't send it direct message on the Instagrams. Email it to me and put in the subject jack wagon or Leadhead Brigade Hero or you know something along those lines. So it's easier for me to find because you know I'm lazy. <laughs> But just perusing through the headlines, I, I you know, I Googled gun news. And let's see what pops up here under news. And as we're recording, this is October the 21st, and Harrisburg safety monitor on leave after bringing gun to school. I guess that's in Pennsylvania. Hmm. Um, so a safety monitor... What is a safety monitor? Do we know? What Isn't that, is? that like a school resource officer? I'm like thinking a, that's on duty officer. I'm thinking what that's what it is. A Harrisburg school safety monitor has been placed on leave after accidentally bringing a gun to school in a backpack this week, according to district officials. The safety monitor brought a backpack to a school that contained the gun, but did not realize it was in the bag. Superintendent Truman wrote in a letter Friday to parents. The letter did not say which day of the week the incident happened, nor at which school. The letter also did not explain how district officials uh, discovered the gun. Weapons are not permitted on school property, you know, because it's one of those safe zones. Yeah, yeah. You know, schools yeah. are are safe zones, finger quotes. Weapons are not permitted on school property, though the monitor was legally permitted to carry a weapon. Uh, safety monitors are not armed as part of their professional duties. That's helpful. Maybe they should be. <clears throat> right. <laughs> the one person in the school that should be allowed to carry one. Right. Uh, yeah. The monitor did not intend to use the gun to harm anyone. Uh, nevertheless, this is a concerning violation of our district yeah. policy, and we take yeah. this action very seriously. We right. are focusing right. on safety and security in our schools, and this must be utmost priority. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> These people. Uh, so we know how safe zones work. They're not safe. They're safe uh, from people that are safe, but for criminals and people who intend to do harm, you know, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Yep. Yeah, man. If, uh, you know, they don't care about a life or a death sentence for killing people, I don't think they're going to care about a sign that you got on the door either. No, so. not at all. It's not. That's not going to concern them whatsoever. Uh, or, uh, you know, stealing one or, uh, you know, however they come right. by them illegally. Right. Uh, yep. Yep. All right. Some more headlines here. Uvalde School gets $442,000 from John Conran's federal gun safety law. Um, the gun safety law allocates $100 million dollars for a DOJ grant program for school districts to invest in safety programs and technology. Okay, there's probably limitations on their safety programs and the technology that they can sure. use. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm not going to read that article. I just want to read some of these articles here. It's just the headlines. Uh, major gun safety group turns its attention to sheriff uh, races with new ads. Uh, let's see. In figures... First shared with NBC News, every town for gun safety said it is spending $300,000 on ads in two local sheriff races this year. So there, I mean, there, there's evidence that the anti-gunners are dumping money into sheriffs that are anti-gun. That, that's the people they want to get elected. Yeah, I mean, the sheriffs have always been the ones that have kind of stuck up for, for firearms rights, you know. Some, um, not all some. sheriffs, but yeah, but some at least sheriffs. around here, man, you know, we've, we've had pretty good luck, uh, with sheriffs. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there've been some that have been very vocal about it and, mm-hmm. um, there have some that have been vocal the other way too, uh, being sure. anti. Yeah. So our local sheriff used to run all the concealed carry permits and then, uh, they moved it over to, um, the DMV, you know, yeah, and then uh, the DMV got caught leaking everybody's info to the federal government. <laughs> leaking, right? There's yeah, no leaking. leaking. They yeah. just gave it to. Uh, oops! Oh darn! I hate when that happens. Um, and then the sheriffs actually uh, took it back 
from the DMV, and uh, now it's all through the sheriff's department again. Well, it so, shouldn't. It shouldn't even uh, be that way. That's still uncon- unconstitutional. You know. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Yeah. You take a win when you can get it, though. You know what I mean. So. They well. Do the same thing to us. So. When they little little inches, you know. There become, shouldn't be miles. Yeah, though. and there shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be that way. Right. It shouldn't be. I'll take every them. little every little thing I can get. Is it's there. It's yours. You have it already. Yep. You don't need yep. someone else. Someone else to tell you or grant you that privilege. It's not a privilege. Oh, it's man. it's a right. It's guaranteed. Yep. yep. Um. So yeah, jack wagons. They're um, all over the place. <laughs> now, though I'm I'm seeing a trend here. Anti gun violence group will spend one million dollars against election, um, candidates. So basically, you know, your anti gun people are active during this, you know, it's election time. You know, there's a lot of elections going on and um, they're dumping their money, they're dumping their their time and their resources into getting their people into office, which we need to be doing the same thing. So we need to be countering that by supporting our local. And that's where it starts is your local uh, elected officials. So you want to get somebody local that believes things that you believe. I'm not going out and saying – you know, everybody needs to go pro gun or you know whatever. You vote how you want to. That's that's the freedom of this country. And um, you know, I just happen to be pro two A and pro America and pro Constitution. And <laughs> so I want people like that in these offices to represent my beliefs uh, and my desires. Because a major misconception is that these people are our leaders. They are not leaders by no yeah, means. Representatives. They're yeah. representatives. The president of the United States is not a leader. He's a representative. And they do not lead us. They do not tell us what to do. It's not supposed to be that way. That's not the way our system was set up. Yeah, that's a good distinction, man. Yeah. So, like that. so do not fall into that, uh, that mindset that these people are leaders and we are supposed to follow and do, do what they say. It's the opposite. We elect them. We put them there to represent us our desires, our wishes, our best right. interest. Uh, so there you go. Um, I try not to get political on here, but you know sometimes we just got to restate this, especially during an election season. Yep, yep, for sure. Uh, and then here's one of our biggest jack wagons of, of all time. Canada bans new handgun sales, imports, and latest gun action. Uh, what's his name, Trudeau? Yeah. Uh, some of these websites you click on and all these pop-ups you get to you can't even read their damn stories. <laughs> it's the only way they can make money, man. Regulations prohibiting the sale, purchase, or transfer of handguns within Canada uh, can take effect on will take effect Friday. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said, adding that the measure builds on earlier efforts banning handgun imports. The handgun freeze was announced in May. The long size proposed legislation that would implement the nation's strongest gun control measures in 40 years as part of Trudeau's plan to tackle gun violence, his office said. We have frozen the market for handguns in this country, Trudeau said at a news conference in Surrey, British Columbia, attended by family members of gun violence victims and other advocates. Uh, I'm not even going to read the rest of that. It's just, it's bullshit. Sorry. But. <laughs> It is. It's. I'm tired of hearing this crap uh, and these people touting them as, you know, as heroes and doing, you know, doing great things. They're they're not. I know, man. He is just a little, uh, little dictator, uh, and again, not a leader. <laughs> he is not a leader whatsoever. I think they still have elections in Canada, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Dictatorships, yeah. but. Yep. Uh, anyway, plenty of jack wagons there. You just 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 do a news Google, and pretty much anything you see in the news is going to be full of jack wagons. Yeah. Let's let's talk heroes now. Let's honor some heroes. Let's counteract all this jack wagoneriness with some some good old American heroes. And I know Brian, you've got one that you would like to to honor today. Yeah, man. Uh, so my grandfather was a huge part of my life uh, growing up. I think he's probably the largest influence on, you know, the man that I am today. And uh, he passed away a few weeks ago. So that was tough. He was 93. Uh, oh, man, I'm sorry for your loss. 
Yeah, thank you. That's tough. Um, Being 93, I mean, he's part of your life for a long time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so I have a five-year-old son and a -a one-and-a-half-year-old, and, you know, they both got to meet him, and my five-year-old's old enough that, you know, he'll remember him and that type of stuff, so that was really cool, but, uh, you know... He uh, he had this nickname, uh, Hammer and Hank, the hurling history professor from Hickman High. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, uh, say that fast. <laughs> yeah, right. So but he was a uh, semi-pro pitcher, and uh, he actually pitched the Army when he was stationed in Germany. Oh, cool. And, um, and then devoted his life to, to education. So, um, yeah, just a big, big influence in my life, and uh, sure going to miss him. So Was he a high school though. teacher? So uh, he was a high school teacher and then uh, assistant principal and then uh, assistant superintendent. So, Did he do any coaching through his years? No, 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 not really. Uh, you know, just super active in the community and, yeah. and volunteering and that type of stuff. So, And he taught uh, history. Yeah. And I bet he taught yeah. real history. Yeah, well, he grew up in the Depression. You know, he was born in 29. So he so literally it. born into the Depression and, um, uh, you know, he, he kind of modeled his life after, you know, all of the, all the things that he had learned, you know, growing up in the great depression. So, yeah, I bet he was a great teacher too. Yep. Yep. Good man. Good man. How many years did he teach? You remember? Do you remember? <laughs> um, so, I mean, he started when he, uh, got back from Korea. Um, so he was stationed in Germany during the Korean war and then started then, you know, yeah. so yeah, 50, How, you know, 60 years. 50 or 60 years, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a good one, you know, there for a while. Yep, yep, for sure. I just don't but know about yeah. the school systems these days, you know? I mean, that's a whole nother, oh, I know, man. Whole nother can of worms getting into the I know. Yep. indoctrination yep. of our uh, our youngsters there. So. Yep. Well, there you go. What was his name? Hank Steer. Hank Steer. What, yep. say, say the uh, nickname again. <laughs> it was uh, the Hammer and Hank, the hurling history professor from Hickman High. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was actually published in our uh, local newspaper like 20 or 30 years ago or something like that. So it was that was one of the really cool things, you know, is, uh, you know, as people found out that he had passed, you know, all these people were calling and sending uh, text messages and uh, letters and stuff about memories and stuff they had of them. And that's cool. Uh, somebody from, from our church, uh, sent that article over and that, that was pretty neat to read. That is so, cool, man. So yeah. good old hammer and Hank, <laughs> that's right, he gets a ride on lead force one. That's right. Yep. Yep. And, uh, he gave me, you know, all his guns when he passed. And, um, so, you know, those will live on for forever, too. So. Oh, wow. Did he have any from when he served? No, he didn't. didn't uh, he carried a grease gun uh, oh, in Germany. That's and awesome. uh, he, he always said he hated that. <laughs> he hoped he never had to use it. He uh, transported uh, top secret documents from one station to another in Germany. And so uh, they gave him a grease gun to do the transportation and... Uh, he said he hated shooting that thing because he didn't think he could hit anything with it. <laughs> well, <So. laughs> I don't think they were designed to be accurate. They were designed right. to spray and pray, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, exactly. wow. So I'd love to have one of those, man. No, no but, doubt, uh, man. Yeah. Th- those are. He gave me so he gave me a twenty-two uh, Smith and Wesson revolver, a K K twenty-two masterpiece uh, from the fifties. That thing is gorgeous. Uh, all the guns are from the fifties. Um, uh, Mossberg twenty-two bolt action oh cool um it's tube fed bolt action and that thing is a squirrel's worst nightmare uh (laughs) it's crazy accurate and um just 12 gauge pump a uh 30 out six with like a old school scope on it you know what i mean Uh and uh i shot my first deer with it and uh it was like right at dusk and the scope had like zero light transmission through it but probably I like really an old tasco or something there for the first you know for my first deer just to shoot it the way that he shot it you know right and um luckily it was a close shot and i really honestly didn't even need the scope uh i think it was about a 40 yard shot so uh it ended up Isn't it amazing well, you know we we look back at what our our uh, forefathers dude. used to to hunt with and the technology 
uh, you know, and optics that we have today and, right. you know, and some of us still can't even hit a deer, you know, with <laughs> some of us, I'm, I'm saying me, I'm calling myself out on this, um, yeah. with the technology yeah. and they were, you know, they were basically using iron sights and just, yep. you know, yep. putting meat on the table every day. Right, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I used to shoot quite a bit of three gun before my daughter was born. And, uh, I was always really impressed with the guys that shot irons. Um, cause you know, we'd shoot out to 600 yards. One of the guys that I work with, uh, always shot irons and it really always impressed me how accurate he was with that. So yeah, yeah. that's cool, man. I always learn to shoot with your irons first. Definitely, because something inevitably yeah. will go wrong with your, you know, two thousand dollar optic. <laughs> right. Yep. It'll go to crap, and you're gonna have to rely on those irons. That's so. right, man. That's right. Well, that's cool. So it sounds like you got some nice heirlooms uh, from your yeah, granddad man. to pass on to yep. your kids. Yep, for sure. Yep. And I know, and I think we we talked about this last episode, but uh, you you have indoctrinated your children into firearm safety and. Uh, yeah the firearms world yeah yeah i think we were talking last time you know that uh you know he's got toy guns and stuff but he's not allowed to point them at people and i bought him this little electronic target that kind of keeps score on where you shoot it you know uh just to try to start him off you know that way i don't have to have that explanation to him you know when we go to shoot a real gun like okay this one's real you know you can't different rules for it yeah yeah Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's he's a good super way to do smart it, kid, man. But you know, just I figured it'd make things easier. And uh, I think in the spring, so I built a uh, Thompson Center TCR twenty two, and I did mm-hmm. a form one on a little twenty two can. And uh, so that's gonna that's his gun. Uh, nice. But I, I bought it for him when he was like two. <laughs> 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 so I think uh, that's good. Spring, that's a good actually, dad right there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So I think I'll take him out this spring though, and just put it on one of the Caldwell uh, stingers, and uh, just let him let him pull the trigger on it. And I think he'll really enjoy it. So. Oh, I know he will. You should do a yeah. video. You should video that. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. When he shoots that, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, you know, by the time that he's old enough to get out and you know do it on his own, that you know maybe that'll be money wasted on that form one that you had to use on on a suppressor, and they'll just be so, common. Man common everyday purchases like they are in other countries you know you just go to the drugstore and get one yep yep yeah i mean i got my form one in like 21 22 days or something like that are Uh, you serious so that was fast worked out really well yeah yeah so that was the benefit of the form one instead of the form four so um but now i think you know with the e-file and everything and they've i think they've got a lot of the kinks and stuff worked out that even the form fours are, are moving a lot faster now too. So, yeah, I don't know. The last one I did, it took, uh, it took about 15 months or so, 16, almost 18. Right. I don't know. Yep. It was yep. a long, yeah. it was a long damn time. <laughs> yep. For sure. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, I don't have any heroes right off. Let me just check my email real quick and see if we got any, Leadhead heroes. So I got a little box. When they come in, I'll throw them in a folder. Not a box. It's a folder, right? They're called folders. Uh, let's see. Leadhead Brigade heroes. Unless I just put them in the wrong. Sometimes you miss those folders when you're dragging, and you'll drop them in another right. folder. Oh, yeah, man. I used to search bar a lot. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should do that. Let me do jack wagon. Uh, let's see what we got here. Jonathan Gallup has one here. Did you see this article from NPR? Almost feels like the NPR are trying uh, to use scare tactics. I mean, they all do that. When all I felt was the more the merrier. I guess the jokes on NPR, everyone is welcome in the 2A community. Heck, there might be an interview for you there. They named some specific organizations like Keep firing LLC. They might want to do an interview. Anyway, I hope this message finds you well. So let's click on this uh, article. NPR is the Nas- what, National Public Radio. Is that what that stands for? Yeah. Uh, let's see. There, these are the faces of the rising number of black gun owners in the U.S. 
Uh, black gun ownership in America dates back to before the country's founding. Firearms helped aid Nate Turner's rebellion against white enslavers. Harriet uh, Tubman famously carried her pistol uh, along the Underground Railroad. Civil rights leaders felt it necessary to arm themselves against potential racial violence uh, from journalist Ida B. Wells insisting that every black home be equipped with a Winchester rifle to Martin Luther King Jr. trying to obtain a concealed carry license. Uh, And in recent years, more black Americans are buying guns. Chicago-based photographer Christian Lee wanted to present a specific picture of black gun ownership. He called it, Project Armed Doesn't Mean Dangerous. And he set out to photograph black gun owners uh, in his hometown. Interesting, man. I like, I'm going to pull that article up while I'm thinking about it, man. I like that. Yeah, let me, uh, I'll share it in yeah, the, shoot it over to me, man. the yeah. link here. Cool. In the chat link. Uh, Pace Center. And uh, for our listeners, Sweet. if you guys want to pull this up, you just go to npr.org. And I guess you just put in their search saying black gun owners. Um Possibly, but that, I mean, that's kind of shocking that NPR would run this. Yeah, man, for sure. Run this uh, interview article. Hmm. But yeah, it goes through, and it's uh, this guy's gone around to different homeowners and got them taking their pictures. It reminds me of that book that uh, I was in. There was this uh, a guy doing something similar, and I mean, it wasn't race based or anything. He was just going around the country. Um, interviewing people um about what the second amendment means to them um and he would do just regular joes and he would do celebrities and uh he did this book i wish i could remember what it was here hold on i'm gonna grab it real quick it's just right over here it's on my coffee table Called called We the People. Uh, ben Philippe, P H I L I P P I. We had him on, and this was years ago. Um, here's the book. I don't know if you can see it. Mm. Am I sharing my screen? Yeah, that's it. So, so for you, lad has, and I don't know if you can still get these or not, but you still could get them on Amazon. And uh, like Chris Chang is in there. I just opened it up to to Chris Chang. You know who Chris Chang is? No, I don't. Uh, did you ever watch Top Shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he won a season of Top Shot. Gotcha. Uh, okay, cool. IT, the IT guy, geek, you know, he was yeah, portrayed yeah, yeah. that way. Okay. And, and he's also um, gay. Yeah. Which, you know, again, shows the diversity of our community. We welcome right, everyone, man. no matter what your sexual yep. preference, religion, or... Or anything. Sure. Um, there's some famous people in here too. I can't find them, but uh, yeah, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's neat, man. He's a really good photographer. So it just gives like a little profile on each. Yeah. So, uh, Flem, uh, what's his first name? Glenn Fleming. You know, he was on Sons of Guns. Yep. So he's in there. See if I can find my picture. You think I'd have it marked. There it is. Boom. Oh man, look at that. So it's back when I had long hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> look at it, man. I like it. Check out that dude, baby. Right. That's cool, man. Yeah, and then he just does, you know, did a little article and you know, what our what our quote was, what the Second Amendment means to us. Hmm. Kind of deal. Um, there's some actors in here. I don't know. It's it's a cool book. Steven. I can't remember who all's in here. It's been so long. He had that sheriff. Um, uh, I just had him on the show not too long ago. Sheriff. Uh, he's known as America's Sheriff. He's on all the like conservative talk shows. Where's the cowboy hat? And I don't know. Yeah, David Clark. Sheriff David, David Clark. Clark. Yeah. Gotcha. Sheriff Clark. Here it is. Yeah, America's Sheriff David Clark Jr. Episode four four four. We had him gotcha. on. Gotcha. Um, here, I'll show you his picture. Then it'll probably ring a bell to you. Start. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. I remember seeing that podcast now. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we had him on. 
Hey, there's mine. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, yours is. <laughs> yeah, we, we scrolled past it. Yours is oh, right, right before yeah, yours. Right there, that's me. Yeah, yeah. four four three. There it is. Look at there. Yeah. Emmy knows. Yeah, work, uh, Emmy working on my basement there, making some ammo. Oh. Now I was gonna say you look a little different. Did you grow this mustache since? Uh, I did, man. Yeah, yeah. A lot. I'm digging yeah. the stash, man. <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> There's no substitute for a nice mustache. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So. If you've got lead leadheads, if you've got jack wagons, you got lead head brigade heroes, you can email me talkinglead at gmail.com. If you've got nominations, we will read them on air. And did my screen go back to normal? Yep, you're good, man. Okay, good deal. Uh, and you might even win a prize because you know that's the theme of this show. You participate. Uh, is how you become eligible to win prizes, whether it's through sending me stuff like jack wagon nominations, lead head brigade heroes. Uh, maybe guest request, topic request, uh, and then, of course, when I make a post on the social meds, when we've got a special guest like Brian on, uh, and I ask for your questions and comments, um, that's where we reward a lot of our listeners there. So, talking at gmail.com. I'm Lefty. I'm the host. <laughs> but you're not left-handed. I am not. So, I we are going through the list. Uh, making sure we got everybody's holsters set up the way they need them. And it said, you know, lefty uh, talking lead. You're expecting to see and left-handed. I'm like, it says he's right-handed on our list on our, in my spreadsheet, <laughs> but his name is lefty. I swear he should be lefty. <laughs> he's like, what's up with this bull crap? I'm like, this makes no sense. <laughs> So yeah, there, there's a history behind that name, and we've talked about it in prior episodes. So uh, if anybody's curious as to how I got the, the nickname Lefty, you can go back and listen to those episodes. And I'm sure I'll tell it again uh, sometime. <laughs> sometime soon. But you know, for you, I am right-handed. I, I need okay. a right-handed holster. So. <laughs> All right, I got you. Got you. Uh, and what we're talking about is that class at, at Gunsight that uh, we're getting ready to go to. Um yeah. Let's talk about that since we're talking about I mean, it. We, we brought yeah. it up. So um, this opportunity came up a while back, and because of COVID and you know reasons, it's it's been rescheduled, and uh, we're finally going to get to to do this. Uh, there's going to be a group of media personalities, I guess. Um, yeah. That yeah. Are gonna we be have attending uh, 22 this. Uh, influencers that are coming out to the event. So. Uh, 21 influencers i'm not an influencer <laughs> oh come on we'll count you Don't i'm worry. media i'm media yeah right right yeah so i'd say it's probably 15 influencers and probably six media yeah because um, i saw somebody from recoil was going to be there yep, uh that's yep. going to be awesome uh, t tag will be there you know the truth about guns uh firearms blog gun talk um so yeah those are pretty much the media people yeah and then for the influencers um we got 22 plankster uh crispy uh the gun collective uh the gold brothers steve from the gold brothers um so yeah man it's just nice. it's crazy it's a nice. it's a crazy group so we're gonna we're gonna have a real good time so we started so. like i said we did we did this podcast like 10 years ago is when we started this uh and, yeah and david you know he's 22 plankster he's in this area he lives in the tennessee area Oh, okay, cool. Uh, and he was one of our first guests. I think we had him on the first season. Um, but yeah, well, he's been a friend of the show for a long time. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So you know, he rocks uh, Crimson Trace stuff on all on all his guns. Um, you know, he's been a Crimson Trace guy for a long time. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're we partner with Crimson Trace all the time, and so it uh, it was just an easy easy decision for us. And then you know, we tried to just get. A wide range of of people you know like uh steve gold from the gold brothers they do like crazy shotgun trick shots um cool. they've got hundreds of thousands of of subscribers on youtube um we got jay the shooter who uh, is a class three sot and uh so he's always got crazy guns on there you know i've got the 
the five seven up there. Oh, and, nice! Uh, he's got a full auto one that he. I'm trying to get him to bring to the event. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, full auto five seven, man. I'm so that stoked. That would be awesome. That. Yeah. I guess you're yeah. buying the ammo for that. Uh, yeah, I guess I kind of have to, right? So, um, uh, you know, full autos normally dollar signs, but when you're shooting five seven by twenty eight, it's uh. It's, it's pretty expensive. Yeah. So, but the cool shoot factor, anything man. these oh, days. So, cool. so yeah. Yeah, yep. ammo's still up there. Uh, so, but yeah, so we, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're going to do a tour of a uh, vault room that we did out at Gunsight uh, for the, one of the armories out there. And then, uh, so we'll do a tour of that on one day. Um, and then each day we're going to, do a three gun defensive course put on by gunsight academy and uh so we've got three custom uh firearms that uh we have so we have a springfield armory uh saint um Ooh. that is a gorgeous rifle um, i've honestly, I'm not shot one of those yet so i'm looking forward to uh trying I that out i really like it man yeah um it's definitely one of the best looking ars from you know from the big manufacturers um yeah, I've seen and it. Then, I just haven't, um, I haven't got any trigger time with it yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, you get plenty of it. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and then we've got a uh, Polymer 80, uh, a full full gun build from Polymer 80. Oh, sweet. And that's that's got a Crimson Trace uh, rad on it, so um, that'll be fun. And then, oh, the Saint Rifle has a uh, CT, uh, brand new CT uh, LPVO. So, which is not yet released Ooh. so you guys will get the first look at those well that's kind of the purpose um, of this event too is you've got some new and and if you can't talk about them yet that i understand that's fine you don't have to to say yeah, them yet on the yeah. show but um yeah. i mean that's kind of the thing is you guys got some new and exciting products that you're going to reveal yeah. to this select group of media people and luckily right. thank you for including talking lead so i can bring the lead heads along man. Yeah, well. man. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, and then we have the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P-12, the little bullpup shotgun. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going to be fun. So, and then it's got a uh, HRO on it, which is kind of the bigger uh, red dot. It's called the heavy recoil optic. Right. And um, what was it? A couple months ago, we were uh, testing out the Caldwell um, – the new Caldwell clay thrower mm-hmm. and we just had the fun. I, we needed to test those M and P 12s. And so, uh, we just threw one of those HROs on it and it was so crazy. Like, uh, shooting clays with a bullpup shotgun with a red dot on it. And, uh, it actually worked really, really well, man. It was awesome. It was cool to be able you see a lot more of kind of the, the mm-hmm. sky and the landscape and where the clays moving through right. the red dot. Um, so, it was really. It actually worked really well. Yeah, we're, like, we're pretty oh, man, good. This is awesome. We just need to put HROs on all the shotguns for the event. So we plays with a red dot. That is yeah, and a bullpup shotgun, man. <laughs> that is next level right there. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. The the shotgun purists are rolling in their grave. I'm sure. Oh but, no doubt. Uh, it's a good time, man. How do you know how long that uh, that bullpup is? Um, the it is link. basically Tavor size. It's like a Tavor. So yep, yep. Very cool. Yeah, I like your yeah. Tavor there you got there. IWI, yeah, sponsor of the uh, Talking yeah. Lead AK yeah. Corner. That's right, man. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so that, yeah. So that That's event, we're going to uh, try out some thing. new stuff. It sounds awesome. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Uh, we're yep. going to get to see some cool... Si- Are we going to a haunted house or something? <laughs> so, okay, this is an awesome story. Okay. So uh, Prescott, <laughs> Arizona is where we always stay when we go to Gunsight. And um, it's about 40-minute drive or so uh, to Gunsight. But, um, so they have this, their main drag is called whiskey row. Mm -hmm. And, um, there, this like late 1800s, there was a huge fire that like took out the whole town and there were a bunch of guys uh, sitting around drinking during the day, of course, uh, at this bar and the bar is called the palace and it's been there forever. And, uh, so they, they, wasn't that in tombstone? What's that? So wasn't that in the palace? I don't know. Uh, I've seen that um, in some Western movie. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Sorry. So, um, so yeah, there was a fire and the guys are sitting at the bar and the most important thing, obviously in a bar is the bar. So all the guys that were sitting there drinking, they carried the bar 
the actual bar top outside, set it in the middle of the street, and watch the town burn as they were just sitting there <laughs> drinking at the bar. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, once they started putting everything back together, they built the new place uh, with that old bar in it. Uh, and so when we have dinner there, it's like the actual bar that they carried out when the rest of the town burned. So, this yeah, it? that's it, man. That's it. Yeah. Wow. So That's a big bar, so too. Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is, dude. It's serious. Yeah. Probably two so dudes carried that out. There a lot of people drinking in there. Back in those days, you know. Right, right. Yeah. They were so, strong. So this is the, uh, the so palace. Yeah, nice. The, the palace is, is known to be haunted. Uh, we were there for uh, an event a few months ago. One of the girls uh, went to the bathroom, and uh, she came back. She was like, man, some girl is like going crazy in the bathroom. We're like, what are you talking about? And uh, she's like, yeah, she was just screaming and crying and you know, I felt bad for her, but, uh, you know, I was kind of freaked out. So I just, you know, finished up in there and left. And, uh, we were like, well, did you see her? She's like, no, I just kind of saw a shadow, you know, of her walking, you know, across the bathroom into the other stall. Uh And the, um, the Maggie, one of the waitresses, she came over and she's like, tell me that story again. And so I guess, that's like a common thing is that the girl's bathroom no. is haunted. Uh. So they had the lady who's giving us the haunted tour of whiskey row. Mm-hmm. They brought her in that next week to try to get the, the ghosts and stuff out of the, out of the restaurant. So I'm not, I'm not a big ghost person, man, but, uh, and you said you we're know, supposed to go to this place one night. We, so we go to, we eat at the palace twice. And it's haunted. It's our favorite place. Yeah, and it's haunted. <laughs> I'm yeah. not going. And then the ho- the hotel that we're staying at is also haunted. But oh, if you great. go to the hotel's website, it specifically says it's not haunted. <laughs> <laughs> and, Why uh, wouldn't they advertise it being haunted? Because that's man, like an attraction. I know. I know. But if you Google it, you can see all the stories and stuff. And uh, so we actually gave uh, What the Kicks, the haunted room. So he's uh, he's super stoked about it. So Nice. Well, yeah. I'm glad you didn't give it yeah. to me because I would, I know, right? I would trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was super excited to have it. So we're like, all right, man, it's yours. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to do a tour one uh, on the last night of all the different uh, spots on Whiskey Road that are all haunted. So that nice. should be really cool. So apparently so. the uh, the Wyatts, the Earps, or not the Wyatts, Wyatt oh, yeah. Earp and his brothers have been there. Yep. Doc Holliday's been there. Uh, yeah, dude, the history is insane, like, when you walk in, uh, it's the old tin ceiling, and there's bullet holes in the ceiling from people just, you know, <laughs> racking rounds off inside of the place. So <laughs> it's, it's cool, man. You're going to love it. Uh, it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. So, yeah. yeah so sure. we're going to do an episode of that uh, with you guys. We'll probably get some of the attendees on, and, um, you know, we'll do a whole episode, like a follow up episode of, of our uh, experiences at Gunsight the haunted uh, bar and restaurant and hotel. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be a good time. Fun so yeah, times. the main purpose of the event, you know, is just kind of kick off the launch of the secure walls, which is what's behind me and behind you. Right. That's and uh, to bring all these today. influencers in and, uh, you know, kind of walk them through each of the products. And a lot of the people like we specifically chose because they were either in the middle of building a vault room or, uh, they had space that they wanted to dedicate to doing one. And, uh, like Steve gold, if you watch one of his videos, he's probably got 150 or 200 or so shotguns in this vault room that he built. Mm -hmm. But 90% of them are just like leaning up against the wall and uh <laughs> kind of like behind me right yeah here. right yeah you need another set of walls it looks like there bud well i've got some more panels i just haven't uh haven't put them yeah. up yet yeah so uh you know we we strategically chose people uh who were either going to have them in the background of their videos or uh had you know a spot at their house or an armory uh that they were going to build so uh jeremy tramp from uh offensive group do you know him mm he takes these incredible photos on Instagram. He was actually like one of the first uh, accounts I ever followed on Instagram. Cool. But they have this just like incredible gun collection. And uh, so he built one and he, I think he's probably used like the, the room that he set up is probably the most compact 
uh, storage of guns that we've yet to see on on the secure walls. He's just got them packed in there as tight as he can. How do you spell his last name? So T R E M P. T R E M P. Yeah. So if you just look up Jeremy Tremp on Instagram, I'm pulling him uh, up now. I'm going to share this yeah, with man. our. Uh, He's got some really cool stuff. Start sharing. Is that the right one? Yep, that's the man. I'm going to go ahead and follow so, him. <clears throat> yeah, so all of his photos and stuff, man, just the style of you know his photos and uh, the guns and stuff that he has on there. It's just it's He knows awesome. a little something about lighting. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> which is key For in sure, photography, yeah. which I know nothing For about sure. lighting. Yeah. Obviously. So, cool. So he's going to be yeah. there? Am I going to get to meet him? Yeah, he's going to be there too, yep. Sweet. Yep. Looking forward to so. it. And what was the the other guy that you said staying in the haunted haunted room? Oh, what the kicks? What? Uh, is that it? That's him right there on top. <clears throat> so I'm pulling this. Up. What the kicks? Yeah. So uh, he always does these videos of like kind of a mix between like shoes and firearms. Um, <laughs> yeah, I see some shoes so right yeah, there. Yeah, you can see the shoe collection and stuff. Oh, that he's wow. Got there and, yeah. Yeah. He's into his shoes. Yep. 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 So, yeah, he does a lot of these, like, appendix carry type uh, reels and shorts and stuff where, you know, he's in his car or whatever and uh, unholsters a gun and uh, just kind of shows you what he's wearing. And, I, you know, the, the firearm is just kind of, like, part of the whole, you know, ensemble that he's got going. So oh, Yeah. A nice little, yeah. So hey, he's got an awesome collection of stuff too. So very cool. So I get to meet these people. Yep. I'm looking forward to this. That's yeah, man. Be a good time. Yeah, you're gonna have a good time. Yep. Good time, head ball. So, so let's talk about the walls since uh, since you brought yeah. it up. Yeah. So this yeah. this new product that you guys uh, are getting ready to release, it's not out yet as you're listening to this, Leadheads. Yep. So the uh, what are we looking at release you know, date on doing... this? Sure. Yeah. So we're doing a launch uh at the event you know which is november 1st through the 3rd and then uh we'll have full inventory by shot show so uh we're gonna do another first of the year they should kind of be a big launch at shot show too yeah okay so, very cool yep yeah so you actually be able to buy panels here um in the next month or two and then uh, the accessories will come a little bit later. So if you want to get head start and, uh, you know, if you got a room that you're working on and you want to buy some panels, you can start with that. But basically, you know, the the secure walls give the everyday firearms owner what they've always dreamed of, which is, you know, having their own gun room. And so, you know, everybody's bought like a 48 gun safe and only fit 24 guns in it, you know, <laughs> or if you're like me, you know, like you had a safe, you open it up and guns just like start falling out of it. Right. You try to like hold them up as you're opening the door. Um, and all your magazines but, and everything starts falling. Yeah. Your holsters. Yeah. So, you know, the pattern that we have is patent pending and um, basically allows you to, um, you know, have to kind of arrange your storage to fit your needs. So, you know, as you know, when you're a first firearms owner and you buy two or three, and then, you know, 30 years from now, you're buying guns all the time, right? And so your collection just grows and grows and grows and grows. And so, like, I've got kind of these ones that are hung horizontally mm -hmm. here. And so you can kind of show off, you know, your favorite ones or whatever. And then you can see uh, the pistols there they're actually spaced one space uh, apart from each other. Mm -hmm. You can actually fit uh, 64 handguns on one full-size panel. So, nice. um, you know, so you can have it. So you got two guns on one panel or you can have it where you have 64 guns on one panel. And so it can really adjust to your collection as it grows. You know, as you buy new firearms, you can move stuff around yeah. and, uh, you know, slowly adapt to it. So you can do like the more vertical storage, you know, in the vertical gun rack mm -hmm. to try to stack as many rifles up as you can. Right. Uh, and then you can use those, those little barrel pegs too. So, so the style that we're talking about for this uh, secure wall, and it's called secure wall. Yep. And uh, it's, it's kind of pegboard style and yeah and like you said you don't have the accessories the hanging accessories out yet so uh for mine i just went to i went to lowe's mm -hmm. you know let's be honest with the lowe's home depot uh yeah. and 
any of them will work. Any of those that go into like a normal pegboard will work on this. Right. But I wanted the yep. uh, the coated ones. Yeah. Um, and people have been um, giving me shit over that. Uh, some of my buddies uh, was like, "Oh, he don't want to scratch his guns," <laughs> which you yeah. know. I mean, whatever. I mean, they get scratched know. enough when I use them, so. Right, right, um, exactly. Yeah, I just like the know. idea of, of something, you know, coated and... Exactly, uh, yep. So, so, you know, this is like, this is the barrel peg uh, that we have. This is the 45-degree angled one, mm -hmm. so you can tell it kind of puts it off yeah. at an angle there. So for display, and, uh, yeah. And it's coated as well. It's got a vinyl coating on there, so my camera doesn't want to focus. Yeah, there. so you something like that, it. you definitely don't want to, you know, scratch the inside of your barrel. So, right, yep, um, yep, Exactly. So the coated so, is definitely the way to go when you uh, want to yep. display your firearms. Yeah, so that's one of the benefits, though, the secure walls. You know, like I've got all this product and stuff hanging over here, and it's just hanging on normal peg hangers. Um, so yeah. that was something that we knew we wanted because, um, you know, not only are you going to store firearms on the wall, but you're also going to store gear, uh, tools like for me i'm a big reloader so i've got this stuff above my reloading bench mm -hmm. and uh, you know i don't want to have to spend ten dollars on you know a specific hanger that's designed for firearms when i just need to hang like a, a bullet puller you know something like that so yeah. i can go to uh, any home store, you know, and buy a hundred pack of peg hangers for 10 bucks or something, you know? Yeah. Just so, for your, you know, any kind you know, like clothes or hat, you know, some people are going to hang their hats up there. Yep, um, yep. you can yeah, hang, I have, uh, you get one of yours, I have my little hat hangers here. Yeah. Yeah. A whole array of, <laughs> you got the, you got the hat hangers, so, but I bought some yep. baskets too. There were some baskets. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, I, put all kinds of various accessories down in there, uh, yeah. slings and yeah. magazines and uh, some optics, uh, depending on what you're going to go with. But right. uh, yeah, so I just went to Lowe's Home Depot, grabbed some of those. Um, and the only, the only coated ones they had at the time, and I haven't been back, but were like the uh, drill, where yeah, you hang yeah. your drills yep. on. Yep. Uh, and those I just were used... Those okay for handguns. They were for they were rifles great. too, so I used two. Yeah. Uh, okay. One for the front, one for the back. And yeah. two of those, and that's what each of the rifles that you see in my background are hung on. Right. Uh, and right. the crossbow is also. Um, yeah. And I just use it, yeah. um, the stirrup, to hang my crossbow nice. vertical. Right. And right. I didn't do any of the the pistol uh, things because I couldn't find any that were coated, so I didn't want to stick my right. my barrels right. in those yet. But. Yep. So, yeah, here in uh, a couple weeks, I'm getting a bunch of marketing samples in. And so everybody that we've sent panels to, we'll send out um, all the accessories and stuff for too. Yeah. So, but the point is, um, it's it's going to be it's limitless on how you right. can arrange your board and and how you want. It's just like a you know just like your shop peg board. You know, you can do yep. tools on this too. So if you're into armor uh, or like Jeremy said, if you're a reloader, uh, you know you can hang your tools on this too above your workbench uh, for easy yep. access. Uh, it's not just for guns. Um, it's you know, anything that you want to use these for, but they're ideal for, like you were saying, the, uh, the firearms enthusiast, um, uh, or archery enthusiast, or, you know, you can hang yep. your compound bows on there too for display. So if you've yep. got a nice, secure, safe room, um, you know, cause you're not going to want to put one of these just out in your living room with your, with your guns, you know, hanging on there for, for all the world to, to see and be able to have access to. Uh, you know, you're st you're gonna have it in a your secure, locked room, um, kind of deal. And of course, you never yep. want to hang one loaded. You never want to put a loaded firearm on on your walls. So it's just a few safety tips and. Yep, for sure. That is. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Um. So this is the long gun hanger. It comes with the pack. Comes with two of these in it. Okay. And, um, so these work really well. You know, all the guns that are hanging up here are using these. Um, and yeah, so that takes up less really well. space than the ones so, I've got. So that would be better. Right. Um, right. Yep. The and they're all coated and everything too, to, to protect your firearm. So, you know, we got like the, the Q fix up there, you know, that's just not a gun that you just want to, you know, throw on some uncoated peg yeah. hangers. So now you've got the vertical uh, racks there that I'm yep. seeing and that, that would yeah. be very cool to put on for display yep. purposes. 
So is right. that one right. that you guys have designed? Yep. 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 Okay. So that's yep. that's coming. Yep, it's coming for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because so you definitely could get more. This, uh, this box right here is that uh, vertical gun rack. Oh, okay. So nice. Yep. And then most of the other ones are uh, coming in these uh, these bags. So. Gotcha. So yep. when they are available, uh, they'll be on your website, and yep, th- they'll be able to work. Yeah, now, you can actually uh, go on there right now and uh, sign up uh, to get notified whenever they're in stock. So, okay, so you get a, go and sign up to get a notification. Yep. Very yep, cool. For sure. Yep. So now talk about the sizes ones. because they come in. They they like said they come in panels, yeah. and I've got one of the smaller ones right here that I'm holding up. Yeah. The ones back there I've are larger here, size. Actually. There's a big so, one. Yep. Yeah. So what? they come in uh, 32 inches wide or 16 inches wide, uh, and then they're 24 inches tall. So, yeah. So do your measurements, uh, so, and based on that, for whatever yep. wall that you're wanting to hang these on, right? you can right. go there. And they're really easy to install. Um, I did yeah. these myself. I found the studs in the walls, uh, and then yep. it comes with screws also. So it comes right. with the hardware that you need. Yep. Uh, to yep. fasten them yeah. to your the to your the wall. screws are designed for uh, wood studs. So we've done a couple installs at some gun stores uh, that are metal studs, and we have a specific screw that we sell uh, for metal studs. It's a little self tapping screw. So uh, that's definitely something to kind of keep in mind, depending on the construction of your wall. Yeah. If so. you've got a concrete wall, then you would need to get some some specific yeah so for, for concrete walls uh that's actually the one at gun site is on concrete what we did for that one is uh we took furring strips like little one by twos or two by twos mm-hmm. and anchored those into the wall with tap cons and then we screw the secure wall onto the the furring strip so oh, nice uh, and then it's then it's nice and secure so uh you know because most actual you know vault rooms you know that are concrete block walls uh, you know, that's kind of what you got to do for it. So, yeah. And these are but, metal panels too, for our yes. listening audience that's not able to see these are metal panels, uh, yeah. which would worked great with your magnets because you could also put, but, but make sure you put the right side because these magnets, there's a weaker side and there's a really strong right. side that's meant yeah. for, for your gun. And yeah, I got a gun sure. over here. I'll just show you how strong this is. There's a, an AK that probably weighs about. I don't know, nine, ten pounds. I don't. It's unloaded. I think this is the right side. So, so <laughs> it just it just picks yep. it right up. Yep. Get my camera back here. And I just yeah, I just did it on the barrel. I could do it on the receiver. Uh, so you yep. can screw these in your wall, or you could put them on like your metal panel there. Right. Uh, and then attach your gun. So I could have done them, I guess, vertical on my, my board with the magnets. Yeah. But they're so hard to get off if you put it on the They board. are, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to have so help one... getting them off. These are strong. And this is the, <laughs> the Magnum magnets, uh, right, heads that we're right. talking about here. Yeah, yeah, that was, that's a serious one for sure. One is plenty um, to hold one firearm in place with no slippage. Right, right, yep. But yeah, one of my, you know, a lot of the competitors that they have, that we have, every time you take a gun off, you know, the the mount kind of moves. So you'll hear this when I snap it in. Oh, nice. So it locks in and it's not moving, right? Yeah. Oh, I like that feature. So it comes off when you want it to. You know, so you can move it around. Yeah. But while you're taking your gun on and off, it's not sliding around. It's not moving around on you. It's not coming off with the gun. And that's so, what I'm having the issues with with these, the right. you know, just your normal pegboard things is when I'm yep. getting my gun, to, those things tend to right to come right. off too. So that's yeah, a so great that's the feature. benefit of, you know, having the lockdown ones that are designed specifically for firearms. And then, you know, whatever else you want to hang on there, tools or reloading equipment or gear or whatever vests, you can use, yeah. uh, peg holes. Your, so. your nods, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You can hang hang it all up there. And uh, so specifically, some you showed a couple of the the hanging accessories that you have. The vertical gun rack, which I really like that. Um, yep. what else, um, 
Yeah, yeah. so we have uh, the handgun hanger, which is this little guy. It's two prong. And, um, yep, two prong, and that's what is uh, holding up the five of seven and uh, and the revolver up there. Okay. So, um, so I had a a pistol hanging up here, mm-hmm. and I was just using one of those drill. Um, yeah. The same ones that I had there, and I just canted right. it a little bit at an angle, uh, and it mm-hmm. it fit in there. But right. again, when right. I take it on and off, I had that where it wants to come out of the. Right. The hole. So yep. these lock so into these place. Little, I like they lock that. in. Yep. Yep. So you can kind of see how it locks in there. Yeah. So so it's a it's a pegboard style uh, board, but then your your locking device is more of a what's that other uh, that other style of board? Um, it's kind of like a slat wall. Slat wall. That's what I was trying to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's so kind you of get a the, blend between the two. You get the slat wall uh, secure uh, attachment in yeah. in a pegboard. So I like that. Right, right. That's really And cool. it's metal. So And it's metal. Which is, right. Right. Yep. So there's that magnet. And the powder coated, you know, is if you accidentally bump a gun up against it, you know, it's not going to scratch the gun or scratch the panel either because that powder coating is really durable as well. So... <laughs> Yeah, and I put it on there with half of it on and half of it off. I just attached the magnet to this wall. Right. Uh, but if I were to put the like, if I were to put it flat like that, oh yeah, it'd be tough to get it's, off. It's tough to get. Off. But it's got this other side that you can knit. Right. That's the easy side. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So then uh, we've got the universal hook. So this is what I have hanging my uh, the hats hanging on. Okay. Um, but it holds uh, thirty or forty pounds. Um, and so you can put, it holds 40 pounds. Yeah. So you can put a, um, you know, a plate carrier or something like that on it if you yeah. need to. So it's real sturdy. So hang your helmets. Hats, I just have hats hanging on it right now. <laughs> put your helmets yep. with the nods and yep. stuff like I was talking about earlier. Right. Exactly. Some heavier, more yep. sturdy type equipment. Yep. Yep. So then, uh, you know, we've also got a basket too. Um, the basket locks in as well. And then um, over on this other side, mm-hmm. got that little shelf over there, too. Oh, okay, shelf. So, yeah, I like the shelf. Yep. yep. So lots of options, man. You can put your trophies um, on there. Yeah, yeah, If you're yeah, into competition exactly. shooting, you get trophy. Put your yeah, trophies up there. Yeah. I've got, uh, you got some I've trophies? Got mine hanging up over here, I guess. So Okay. You yep. got plaques. Those are plaques. Yep. Yep, yep, plaques, and then uh, one one uh, gold medal from the Show Me State uh, shooting games. So congratulations, thanks, man. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, man, that is pretty much it uh, as far as all the accessories and stuff go. And then um, you well, know, that's a we're lot. Slowly going to be releasing some out. So, oh, actually, we didn't really talk about. We kind of I showed you the barrel pegs. But mm-hmm. um, you can kind of see the two orientations. So can you bring your you know, camera closer? Long... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Bring your ca- your camera closer to your board. So yeah. uh, for our listening audience, he's bringing his his camera closer to his board to the pistols where he's got them uh, with the barrel uh, mounts. So you, yeah, the little pegs so just comes right off like that. Forty five yeah. degree angle. Yep. So yeah, these are the straight on ones here on the bottom. Hmm. And then these are the angled ones. The so they actually take the same amount of space, uh, but the angled ones, you see, it kind of shows off the gun a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I personally like the the angled ones, but, you know, I like, you know, having guns like this, uh, this Faxon, you know, that are pretty to look at too. So. Oh, yeah. But, it's good looking again. Yeah, man. I yep. dig it. So. What were you going to say about uh, those pegs? You were going to say something additional. About so yeah, there's just two different versions. Okay, of them. the two so different versions. Straight and the angled. Yeah. So they actually take up the same amount of space. So like if I pick this one up and move it over, get a little closer. Yep. So you can see how you could fit, you know, so many, so many uh, firearms on one panel, stack oh. them like that. So, so for the the artistic gun owner, if you've got you know enough of those those uh, guns, pistols, yeah. you could you could like design a a picture on your you definitely could your yeah. wall with your guns. Yeah. Yep. So while we're up here, you know, we might as well look at kind of this uh, let vertical at, rack. Yeah. Here. 
So the so, vertical rifle rack. Yep. Digging that. So shotguns, rifles. Yep. 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 Yeah. And then, you know, up there with the, the five seven is the um the handgun hanger. Mm-hmm. So you've even got knives hanging on yours, so you could display I do actually, yeah. If you're into so, blades, you could display your blades on these too. So not just yep. firearms, you could do blades too. I know a lot yep, of our listeners exactly. are into knives. Yeah, so uh, these are the new uh, Schrade knives that are made in the USA. So I've got every one that they make up there right now. So every one, look at you. Yeah, yeah. But do you have this so. one? Do you have this knife? <laughs> I may or may not have a box of those over here too. Yeah. Yeah. So these are yeah. cool. I love that little guy, man. I do too, man. And it is sharp as yeah. all get out. So I'm holding up a <laughs> lockdown secure knife. What do you call yeah. this? Does it have a name? No, it doesn't have a name, man. Yeah, it's just like a little little knife that we do for giveaways and stuff. So maybe uh, maybe I'll throw a couple of those little guys in with the prize packs. Oh, that'll be cool. That? that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. that would be awesome. I just yeah. call it. I just call it stubby. <laughs> so it's about a yeah. two and a half inch. Uh, overall length blade, uh, I mean knife, but the blade's probably what half an inch, about an inch. Yeah, it's right at an inch. Yep, right at an inch blade on this thing. That uh, it's just a quick folder, and it's got yep. a uh, a bottle opener on it too. A bottle opener on it. Yep, on yep, the end of for it for sure. Um, yeah, and a little We're clip. We're a big so fan of, of bottle openers around here, man. Uh, a lot of drinking going on around uh, here. I like that. My kind of peeps. Yeah, so I've got this uh, <laughs> little Balsong trainer with the bottle opener on it. So it doesn't have any sharp edges. So I play around with this one and try to learn, you know, new tricks and stuff. So, the old butterfly knife, yeah. Yep, yep. I have I have one trick that I've been working on. I don't know if I can do it. All right, there let's we go. See. We'll do it a little so, higher. Yeah, yeah. Here. Do it again. I've actually never done it up this high. Oh, look at you go. So, yeah. So I can practice right. that, you know, with the with the fake one, and then uh, I've got I've got the real one over here too. If I'm feeling frisky, are so. you are you going to be frisky on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to have to if edit? Could, like, so normally I do it down, like on the ground, so that if I drop it, it you know, it doesn't stab anything. Then stick in so, your femoral yeah, artery. Uh, Right, right. So probably not the best idea to do up in the air towards my face. Yeah, let's not do that on the <laughs> on the Talking Lead podcast. We're we're right, injury right. free so far in yeah, ten years. Injury free zone. Yeah. 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 We're ten years since last accident. So. <laughs> we don't we don't want to cause another one. Um, right. Right. But cool. So yeah. we're looking first of the year, Leadheads, for these uh, secure secure walls to be released. Uh, the accessories yep. soon to follow to be able to hang all yeah. your your uh, cool kid toys, uh, I right. like to call them. Yeah. So, and if the, you're uh, coming to Shot Show, come by and see me at the lockdown booth. We're like basically as you walk in, we're gonna be right there. So uh, we're gonna have the uh, secure wall builder up. So it's a uh, online kind of virtual builder where you type in. You know, I've got a 12 foot long wall by nine feet high, and then uh, it lays out a grid for you. And then you can drag and drop all the panels mm -hmm. onto your wall. And then you can drag and drop all the accessories and stuff over too. And once you have that all built out, uh, you click buy now. And it basically adds every item that you've put on your walls into your cart. And you can buy it right from lockdown.com. So, oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah. So we'll have that up and running at SHOT Show. And people can build their, you know, their dream uh you know vault rooms and stuff with that so that's the secure wall builder uh, like that, that we'll have ready for launch as well so, so can you put your gun sizes in there too and it'll recommend the hangers and all yeah, that stuff well too? so basically what we have is like a full-size handgun compact handgun uh you know 20 inch barreled rifle or 24 inch barreled shotgun so we have right. just kind of generic sizes sure and there's pictures of that that you can drag over. <laughs> you can so, like do a layout, a little virtual layout. Yep, exactly. Oh, that's yep, cool. Yep. So you know, it won't be exact it. to the exact gun that you have, but you'll be able to get a really good, good idea. idea. Of, okay, you know, I've got 15 full size handguns, and you know, I've got 
10 shotguns and whatever and you'll be able to you'll be able to lay all those out and just kind of get a general idea and kind of the goal for that is to really uh take the mystery out of you know building your own vault room so Introducing Cryptek's new hatch jacket. The jacket is secured with a full snap closure system along with two snap pockets. Fitted cuffs and waistband to ensure a perfect fit every time. Made with 100% polyester shell and finished with a DWR water repelling treatment, the hatch is made with a quilted design and no hood to reduce bulk, making it versatile enough for any adventure. 200 grams of Primaloft synthetic insulation make the hatch light, quick drying and ultra warm. Coming in two colors, the hatch jacket, only at Cryptech.com. All right, so let's go to questions now. Let's go to listener questions. Yeah, let's do it. I'm pulling those up now. All right. And this isn't kind of, this isn't related to you guys, but I'll, I'll read it since it's the first one that popped yeah, up here. Yeah, um, So one of our listeners, B. Hurst, he says he's going camping all weekend with his boy. Uh, he goes, what optic do you have on your sub 2K and does it still fold? So just real quick, uh, the kel sub 2000, uh, nine millimeter uh, carbine, you know, it, it folds in half. Uh, I've got one hanging right there. There's a sub 2 2k right there yep on the wall um and i've got aftermarket accessories on mine so stock the way it comes if you put an optic on the rail you can fold it but it won't fold all the way it won't fold closed so your optic will hinder how far it folds but there is an aftermarket accessory made by redline precision i believe uh and it allows you to rotate your handguard. And you can, you know, it's got four sides, so you can have your optic, you can put a light, you can put a four in, and then you can leave one blank. And then when you're ready to fold it, there's a nut that you loosen up, you twist it, tighten it back down, go to that empty rail, and then it will fold down. That's really cool. And you'll get a, a full fold. Um, that's it right there. So I've just got a... Um, I've got an RMR red dot on mine, um, on that one. And the other one, I just use the, the iron sights on it because they're so accurate anyway. So I don't, I don't really have any on it and it's, I think it's in another room right now, but anyway, so there's the answer to that question. Let's go to the grams of our posts that we did. I did a live today too, just reminding everybody. So hopefully we got some more questions between now and then. Did you did you see that post I did? Yeah, man. Did yeah, you like that did. music I put to it? <laughs> I just found some random music, <laughs> rap music that I put to it. Uh, I love that. All right. Yeah, you're talking about like the digital hygrometer and that type of stuff on there too, man. Yeah, I threw it. Uh, th- you know, yeah. threw some pictures up and. Right, and at the very very end of that, I edited in the Radio Shack. You remember the Radio Shack commercial? Yeah, yeah. It's like you have questions, we've got answers. <laughs> we've got answers. <laughs> I yeah. found that old '90s commercial and I popped that in there. All right, flood munitions. And he was just, he was on our last AK corner. Do you offer any way to lock the guns to the wall but still have them displayed? Because I enjoy staring at my prized possessions with eyes glazed over but don't want the little kiddos to have access currently using two hooks mounted too high for the, uh, shoddies to reach. Thank you. Okay. We kind of talked about that a little bit, but not as far as the locking them. Sure. Yeah. So let me, uh, grab the camera here. I actually was playing around with this the other day. Oh, cool. So, um, I basically got one of our lockdown cable locks, passed through the channel and then through the other side of the gun. Okay. So if you've ever been to um, like SHOT Show or NRA and you've seen displays of, you know, the the vendors' displays of their guns, they usually have like this wire that runs through them. 
Right. What he's used is, and Glocks come with these. You get a safety lock um, that that comes with them, and he's it's yep. got a wire. So he's wired it through the holes through the trigger guard of the pistol, and right. then locked it that way. Yeah. So uh, every Smith and Wesson gun actually comes with a lockdown cable lock. Ah. Um, yep. Nice. Yeah. So if you got one of those green cable locks, you're not sure where it came from. You it's locked down. Smith and Wesson firearm at some point, and it's lockdowns. Yeah. And you can go to um, lockdownsecure.com and you can get one of those. <laughs> yep. So um, yeah. So that's one option. Obviously, um, you know we we've been working with a lot of uh firearms dealers and that is their number one request too Mm -hmm. is how do we you know we don't want to take the guns down every time um you know every time we have to close the shop and take everything back and put it back in the safes uh we just want to be able to leave them up and so that's a solution that and some feedback that we've gotten from people and uh so we're working with the engineers to uh, design uh, something that will help you out with that aspect. And, uh, you know, right now, you know, there's a couple options. You can use the cable lock, like I mentioned, mm-hmm. and you can lock it through the back of the panel. And, you know, it's definitely good enough to keep kids away from it. Um, but you could also use, um, I wonder if I've got one. Yeah, we've got these uh, trigger locks up here too. Okay. Yeah, so. trigger locks are can use something like that, you know, as well. So, and that'll just keep the, I mean, they could still take it off on and off. Right. Right. Uh, right. But they wouldn't be yeah. able to yeah. manipulate the trigger right. because of the, the right. trigger lock and that'll fit yeah. on handguns and rifles. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, lockdown has been making, you know, firearm security products for 10, 15 years. So, um, you know, this isn't this isn't something that's new for us. So we've been. So doing what this I would like really to see, and time. this is just an idea. So, this is a freebie for you. Yeah, man. Let's hear and, it. And you're yeah. a designer. You're an engineer, right? So yep. you know how handcuffs work, right? Right. So if you had, you know, another thing that swung up and over and locked in that way over the barrel. Yep. Yeah. Um, that yeah. would be kind of a way to lock it in and maybe secure right. it into place too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that, man. Hmm. Just an idea. You're getting the gears turning, man. I like it. Just an idea. I'm I'm full yeah, of them. Yeah, dude. So. <laughs> That's a good, one. That's a good um, one. So, yeah, you know, we do have current solutions uh, for that right now, and then we're uh, we're working on some better solutions for it in the future. Yeah, so. but your, your number one solution right now is put it in a safe, lockable room. You know, don't yeah. just have it out. Uh, Willy nilly right. out uh, about in your house on display to where any Joe Schmo yeah. could just go around and grab it and take it off the wall and always make sure they're unloaded. They're yep. not loaded. Yep. Yeah. Then we've also got this guy too, honestly. Um, oh. Might as well talk about it while I got it here. Yeah. So this is another one of my designs, actually. Uh, uh, so this is the shelf in, in plain the sight. In plain sight shelf. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like a normal little gun shelf or just a normal little white shelf that sits on your on your wall and you pass a magnet over the top of it and press up on the bottom of it it drops down it's got a little built-in led light and it shines a light on it and you can fit two or three handguns in there um and you could probably fit some sort of little rifle in there i don't know but it was designed for handguns so yeah well, I mean, they're making them smaller and smaller these days. Right. Um, are there plans to make larger shelves, longer shelves? Mm-hmm. Yep. Maybe yep, there are plans. Maybe there mirrors. Plans. Yeah, something, man. Something. Yeah. Just never know. Maybe we always tables. Got, we always got stuff in the works. Other so. types of furniture. Yeah. Possibly. Honestly, man, the the in plain sight shelf is probably one of our top selling uh, products. So. Um, for and some does reason, it work it with a have great reviews on our website? But if you go to Amazon, we've got thousands and thousands of oh, okay. uh, really good reviews on there. So nice. And does it work yep. with a card? And a, was it those RF? It's like a little magnet um, that comes with it. So okay. you can really use any magnet, um, but the magnet does come with it. So gotcha. But it then yep. that's how it locks is with the magnet. So yes. It's a magnet. Yep. It's- yep. Okay. Yep. So you put the magnet over in the right place, and then it, that's what unlocks it. So. And you got a hydraulic arm, so it doesn't just. Yeah. So it releases over. it real slow. Yep. Yeah, I dig that. Um, 
and actually it's uh, compatible with the puck as well. So um, it already has a door sensor in it. So if you put a puck in there, it will tell you if somebody's messing with the shelf. It'll tell you if uh, the shelf is open or if it's closed. Um, and so you can monitor it that way as well. Yeah. So. And that's why I've got uh, – I'll go back to my screen here. That's why I put the puck on this. Let me stop. Um, because it, you can set the sensitivity level right. on your puck. And I've got it like to max sensitivity. So if anybody basically touched that that board, I would get a notification on my phone, yep. text notification, email notification um, through the app, uh, and then you know that alerts me that something's going on with my with with that specific pegboard. And I could right. have different pucks on different boards in different rooms, and I would know where somebody somebody is if they're going yeah. through my house. Um, yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you have a door that's like leading into your gun room, you know, you can put a puck on there and that will alert you. It'll also give you uh, temperature and humidity readings as well inside the room. And you can kind of watch it on a little graph. Uh, you can set alerts if the temperature gets too high or if the humidity gets too high or too low. Um, and you, it can send you alerts based on that as well. So yeah. we've got kind of a whole suite of, you know, firearms protection, whether it's uh, protecting it from theft or protecting it from corrosion. You know, we've, uh, we've been alerts, doing this for a alarms, long time. deterrence. So, I've got the, uh, the plug, the smart plug yep. that you guys make yep. also, and I've got it paired yep. with, with this. So when this goes off, the light comes on. Right. So, yep. you know, it'll, if someone is there and just another way to like, maybe try to de scare them off if I'm not around or, or right. whatnot. It's like, Oh, yep. and you know, you could pair that with a camera system too, I guess. And good. Uh, I mean, there's sure. all kinds of different, different things that you could do. All right, let's yeah, go to the next so, question. We got lots of questions yeah, here. Let's get through these all questions. Right, cool. Let's do it. Um, so that was flood munitions. Good question. Yeah, that was great. John Adams, the third, do you offer any products to organize shorter guns like SBRs or pistols in standard size safes? Uh, many of the shelves are too high, especially when using the barrel rod uh, type holders. Yeah. Um, do I have one? Here's the question. So we've got this uh, little barrel rest. And a lot of times uh, what we designed it for was to stick it on the outside of a safe because when you're using a safe, you it always seems like the gun that you need is like in the very back. So you you know you're yeah. pulling them out and like you're just that. like laying them all over the place. So this you can pull them out and actually set them you know into here. But if you wanted to, you could also attach this to the inside of your safe and you know set it nice and low so that your SBR actually has a place to rest. Um, so that's not what this is, was designed for, but you could definitely adapt it to make it work for that. So, yeah. And that's the thing with all this. I mean, th they have multiple uses, but what is, you know, you design it for a certain thing, but it could be used for other things too. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Your, your uh, creativity is your only obstacle. Right. Yep. So uh, yeah, it's got a little magnet on the back. Okay. Well, and I would, I meant to say that the puck also has a magnet. Um, so mine's just magnetized right. on there, but it comes with yep. a mounting back also right. uh, that I could mount yep. it on. The, like you said, if you want to mount it to a door or something like that. Right, exactly. Yep, and so we're actually coming out with a Gen 2 puck. Um, ah. It has a new door sensor and uh, the updated app and some new firmware. So um, our new app, has gotten really, really great reviews. I think it's got uh, like 4.7, 4.8 stars on, on iOS. Um, so that people are really enjoying the new app. And, the new app um, work with this, with the old puck? Okay. Yep. I, th I must have the new app then. I bet you do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You do. So, um, so that's going really well. And then, uh, so we'll have the Gen 2 puck and then we'll have the uh, Logic Humidity Control Kit, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, you know, which combines the, the puck. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Yep. So it combines the puck, the plug and the dehumidifier rod into one kit. And that kit will actually come with the, the gen two puck. So, um, so yeah, I'll shoot you over a gen two puck whenever we release them and you can find another spot for one. Okay. Well, I got plenty so. of spots. Definitely. Right. <laughs> 
I um, I've I've used them on pretty much all the different doors around the house, the windows, just trying them out for different. Yep different scenarios and yeah yeah i really like yeah i uh (laughs) my wife and i were doing this uh diet for a while and i always had this bad habit of uh getting in the fridge late at night so i uh put one on top of the fridge and uh, put the door sensor on the door and whenever the fridge would open, it would send my wife the notification. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, that kept me honest, you know, late at night. When Accountability. I was the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, awesome. You know, that's that's one of those things, you know, that we talked about where we design it for a safe, you know, but uh, some guy like put it on his garage door because he always left his garage door open. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's there's a million different uses for yeah. stuff, and you I've can put be, it in my know, car creative. too when I'm like at so, the, at a um, going shopping, you know, grocery yeah. shopping or something, just put it out yeah. in the car because yeah. you know, I'm just curious uh, right. if people are right. peeking into my car, you know, or not. <laughs> yep. All right, next uh, question. Um, all right, yeah, what you got? Uh, let's go back to the grams. Uh, another question about can the guns be locked onto the walls? So that seems yep. to be uh, yeah. a demand that people are, are looking for. P-Man asked sure. that also. Yeah. Guns, oil, and dirt. Um, and I ask for just questions or comments or how are you doing, you know, certain things. Yeah. Uh, he says, hide them. Um, so he hides his. He doesn't leave them, I guess, out in the open. Yeah, so that's perfect with the in-plain sight shelf. Yeah, or if you've got a safe um, and all the different accessories that you guys make for the safe. Right, right. Um, he says, yeah. what's the fire rating? Can it be fireproof resistant? What about touch resistance, uh, Linux, or other coatings? Sure. Yeah. So they are powder coated uh, when you purchase them. So, uh, and they're not glossy. It's like a kind of a satin finish. So uh, they're not going to keep a lot of fingerprints and stuff on them. Um, And so fire retarded, though, it's I mean, it's steel, right? So it's naturally fire resistant. Um, And if you wanted to powder coat them your own color, you could. If you wanted to put like a Linux coating on them, you could. Cerakote Um, them. Cerakote them, yeah. Wrap them. If you wanted to use a wrap, you could wrap them. Yep. Yep. So yeah, we've we've done a custom. You uh, want to use a permanent black marker or red marker, you could have your three-year-old draw pictures on it. (laughs) Yeah, you could uh, do like a stencil and spray paint your own like pattern yeah. and stuff on it if you wanted to. So the the options are pretty limitless. But, um, you know, there's no fireboard or anything uh, on the panel. Um, so it's really just based on the fire rating of, of your wall. So. All right, next question. Austin Whalen, and we went over this. Website says out of stock. When will... Yep. Uh, you be getting more in stock. And we went over that. So January is going to be the release, so you can start looking for yep. that. But you can go ahead and sign up at their website and get a notification when they are available. Yep, exactly. Which is, give your website again? Yeah, it's just Lockdown.com. There you go, Lockdown.com. So, yep. And he says, Easy. also, I've been planning on getting pegboard for my hobby workbench, and mm-hmm. this will work great with the style I have so far. Will this work with any other pegboard attachments? And we went over that too. Yep, sure did. Yeah, so you can use it in your garage or above a workbench. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, just for firearms or gun rooms. Nikolai Aplanap, I've made sliding bookcases in the past to hide secret rooms to store safes and gear. They Mm -hmm. can't steal what they don't know is there, even with the best tools. Exactly. Yep, I like that. So, yeah, this would work really well inside of one of those bookcases, you know, to hang all the firearms. You get a lot more firearms, you know, in one spot when you, you know, stack them up like this, you know, than you would just kind of laying them on shelves or, you know, whatever he's got in there. So, yeah. Uh, see, Jesse Bedow does a mannequin wearing my kit in the corner of my room to scare off intruders count. Definitely. <laughs> as as a way to me. display your, your stuff. Yes, but again, you know, you don't want to have loaded firearms on your mannequin or something that they could take and, and use against you. Right. Um, yeah. Yep. Don't make it easy for them. They probably don't know how to load some crazy gun you got. So, 
PPURN, talk about your wall setup, Lefty. All right, so my wall setup changes. Uh, you know, I, I like uh, variety, so I'm just I'm experimenting with different stuff. Um, and before I go like full blown and do more panels, I'm just kind of seeing what I can do with the two larger panels um, that I've got there. So, and until his accessories come, also I'm kind of limited in in what I can do with my setup, right? Um, personally, um, but right now I'm just doing the horizontal uh, displays with my rifles, uh, pistols. I've got my crossbow up there kind of in the center right now, uh, hanging vertical. I've got a couple of baskets. I took one off because I was doing some stuff um, that I've store gloves, you know, some of my, my gloves, my eye pro, ear pro, uh, you know, different things like that. Um, and then I'm always trying out different optics and hand guards and grips and things like that on on ARs and AKs. So mm-hmm. yep. Me um, too, man. it's good for storing that. And I usually will keep it, you know, in that little basket you see right there. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing with mine right now. Strictly firearms and um, crossbows and bows and, you know, stuff like that, that I'm using it for. I haven't put any kit up there yet. I haven't hung any of my vest or anything like that. Um, just because you've got specific things that are coming that will work better for right. those. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. Uh, and I do have it in a secure, safe room away from prying eyes and whatnot. So, and you guys see it every time, except your prying eyes when you watch my videos. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> uh, rifle Negro. <laughs> That's how I'm going to say that. Uh, I don't tell my friends. I don't take lots of photos, and no one knows what I have or don't have, and that's the best way to do it. Don't talk about what you have. Um, that's the smart thing to do. Yep. Uh, let's see. Ernie Roach 21, I believe that's what that says. Do you have a concealment shelf with a more secure locking system? We have a team that is well-trained and trusted, but he's still a teen. I like the idea of having a firearm in other rooms without it being obvious. Sure. Yeah. So I'd say an in plain sight shelf paired with the puck would be the best combination for that. You know, he might be able to get in it, but you'll get a notification as soon as he starts even touching it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that would work out really well. So, but But, that's, that's the most secure thing that we have right now. We don't have any like, uh, RFID, you know, fingerprints or, or fingerprint like or any of that stuff right now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and you said it yourself there, Ernie, he's well trained and trusted. And that's the key. If that is, the if key you don't sure. train, if you haven't trained them and you don't trust them, then you probably shouldn't have, uh, have them where they yeah. know where they are. Yep. Not probably you shouldn't, you definitely shouldn't. Uh, B Hurst 87, as far as lighting and safe LED strips on motion sensor or battery lights. Yep. Or is there yep. another solution he's asking? Yeah. Uh, so we actually have a couple of different options. Let me grab one here. So we've got this one, which is the 75 LED. Uh, this one's crazy bright, and you just kind of click it on and off. Okay with that button and then um if you want to pull up the website actually yeah. lefty we've got a whole section that we can kind of walk through real quick oh cool yeah let's do that so i'm on uh, lockdown.com yep so just go to products and then uh lighting yep so that big heading and bit the one that bold. says lighting yeah 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 the big one i was looking for the small there, yeah. okay yep so that little 25 one let's start with that one okay the 25 led one little square guy down there in the middle yep this one? yep Right. Mm-hmm. So this one is a two pack and uh, it's an automatic light. So it turns on whenever you open the door and it turns off whenever you shut it. So it's got a little photo sensor there. Yeah. And uh, there's a couple different um, a couple different modes that you can put it in. But so those work really well. That's good. And how do they attach? They have a little magnet on them and okay. then they also have uh you know like the little hole with the uh tab for a screw so you just like screw it into the carpet into the drywall and then uh hang it like uh you would hang a um 
picture or something. Uh, like a surge protector or, you know, something like that. So yeah. just got that little hook and tab. And then the um, either one of the vault lighting kit or the tape light kit, um, both of those will work as well. So this one is more like a, a rope light kind of style. Uh-huh. And then the other one is uh, really thin, like LED, and uh, it will turn on and off whenever you open the door as well. Okay. So, uh, this would go good around uh, your secure uh, secure walls here. Yeah. Display. Yeah, for sure. I I wish I had kind of thought ahead a little bit more and put some like uh, green LEDs or something behind my wall, uh, but. When I moved into Hindsight. this office, I was so excited about putting secure walls up that I just kind of did it. Well, you know, you can just unscrew and then screw them back in. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So here's so yeah, the other one. kind of LED strip. Yeah, LED yeah. strip. Yep. So, yeah, you got, yep. got some solutions there. Nice. Yep. Yep. All right, next question is, uh, B. Hurst had a couple here, says, what about ammo storage in safe with dehumidifier or in cans with packs? Yep, for sure. Um, good thing I got my wall over here, man. We've right. Been, uh, we've been using this thing pretty well. I told you. Yeah. So I like these little guys. Um, we've got a bunch of silica gel options, um, but these work really well for, for ammo cans. Actually, I think I have an ammo can over here. Okay. Let me look. So this is my little ammo can. <laughs> Zombie. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have all my all my brass in here um, from the prairie dog trip. And so I save all my brass and use the same brass every year because uh, it's all uh, 223. And so I keep uh, one of these uh, silica gel bags in this you know just to keep mm -hmm. the moisture and stuff out of it so that's really the best thing to use um like i said we've got we've got a bunch of different options um that you can that you can use but i like i like the little uh the gel bags just because you can toss them in that ammo can yeah and uh it works really well so to his question the, yeah to his question yeah. he's he's asking in a safe with dehumidifier and cans with packs um, I mean, you can't go wrong doing both of those in the safe with a dehumidifier with those packs. Yep. Then yep, you stay extra, sure. extra dry for your ammo. Yeah. And then when they get, uh, they turn colors, kind of read that, but they turn colors whenever they get moist and then you just stick them in the oven and recharge them. So okay. you don't have to keep buying a bunch of them. Can you so. microwave them or just is the oven? No, no, just oven. Okay. Don't worry. Yeah. And do not eat. <laughs> it's a shame you have to put that on there that i know right yeah. yeah uh let's see i know we've got some more here uh what what's best options for safe wall hanging with kids in the home we kind of went over that um yeah. you just you don't want to hang it out just willy-nilly out unless it's in a nice a room you can lock and yep. away from prying eyes and prying hands and they've got some locking solutions that they're looking into for for their wall there. For the walls, yeah. Um, and then Shep Guns, probably too late. Anything to hide in plain sight and also keep away from little hands. So There you go. That's, Boom, right there. In that plain sight his. shelf. And then there's another one. We'll finish up with this one. Giddy up. Any new secret squirrel projects that you're working on? Talking Lead is the place for exclusives. <laughs> well, we kind of gave you an exclusive yeah. here with the secure walls. We did. So yeah, for there, sure. Uh, we also gave you a little sneak peek about the Lockdown Puck Gen 2. Yeah. Um, and then we gave you a little sneak peek on the Logic uh, Humidity Control Kit. Uh, a couple other things coming down the pipe are we have a um, universal adapter that's basically like a key mod screw. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you said like when you mount the magnets that there's kind of a weak side and a strong side. Yeah. So this universal adapter will actually screw into those magnets and let you screw the magnet to the wall. And then when you pull the gun off of the magnet, the magnet won't come with it. 
so it'll actually be screwed into the to the wall um and so we've also got you can use that on our uh ar magazine holder too so it's like a little stack and you can fit 10 uh ar or ak uh magazines in this little rack and then you could screw that to the wall uh so basically what it does is it allows you to screw anything you know with the hole and attach it to the secure wall panels without removing the panel and then putting it back on so there you go little, some little sneak preview for you exclusives that's right man for the lead heads now i'm gonna pull this is it okay if i show these those pictures you sent me yeah, yeah, sure, man. Okay, yeah, so yeah, so for our, our viewing audience um, and our listeners who are listening, uh, when the video is up, go to the video and you can see these pictures. So uh, Brian has sent me um, just maybe to give you some ideas on other things that you could do. This is the- right. So this is uh, a gun store that's um, pretty local to us. It's brand new. They just opened called Weber Outfitters. And any of you guys in the competitive shooting world or uh, tactical shooting world have probably heard of uh, Weber Tactical. They make uh, some of the best holsters in the industry. And so they just opened up this new gun shop. Uh, they've got an indoor archery range and, and oh, nice. um, they obviously you know sell firearms and accessories and stuff. So we did a full uh, wall, secure wall system for them to not only hang product on, uh, but also to hang all their firearms that they use uh, for retail sale. Yeah. So, and and what I like about this, which you and I haven't done with ours, is you put a border around it. I like yeah, that. Yeah. I like that touch. Yep. Yeah. So they had a bunch of hickory kind of accents around the rest of the store, and so they just used these uh, one bias and just put you know this nice pretty little border around it and yeah. uh, really matches the rest of the store. Which really is well. another great so. idea. And uh, you put a border like that around, and then it'd be easier to put those LED lights um, around yep. it too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we actually have a uh, dealer program that we're launching for the secure walls. Uh, so if you are a uh, you know a gun store owner, uh, we have a lot of listeners are, that are gun store owners work at gun stores. Yep. So yeah, go ahead. Yep, yep. So if you're interested in that, um, we will actually give you uh some incredible pricing uh that's better pricing than you'll get from anybody else um and we'll uh you'll be able to set up your store if like if you've got slat wall right now uh you can replace your your firearm storage solution with the lockdown secure walls so we'll give you an incredible deal to do that and then uh we also have a dealer program where you know, as people come in and they're like looking at a firearm and they're like, man, that wall system is really cool. Where did you guys get that from? Uh, you can also make a commission off of any sales uh, that are done on lockdown.com if they go through your website. So cool. Um, and we'd be happy to talk to you about that. That will be available, uh, you know, at, at SHOT Show. So if you're at SHOT Show, come see us. We'll get you signed up for the dealer program. And then uh, it'll also be on the website um, coming up here next month. So, or you can email me, and I'll put you in touch with uh, there you go with Brian. Yep, yep, do that too, man. I'd love to talk to you guys. So, so another thing that we're going to to drop this episode before we give before we give away our prizes, we've got another announcement to make. So we got we've got another exclusive, another big announcement um, that Brian and I would like to share with you, Leadheads. Uh, if you are considering these panels, uh, when they do come out in January, um, and up until then, until the meantime, and after, yeah. uh, Brian yeah. has has something he would like to to announce and offer you leadheads. Right. So uh, we're doing an exclusive offer for leadheads uh, on Lockdown.com. So, uh, like Lefty said, you know, if you are interested in something now, like an plain sight shelf or something like that that we talked about today, that's in stock on the website, uh, you can use the code uh, Leadhead, uh, just like all the other you know codes for for the podcast on Lockdown.com. And then um, Lefty, I think you have a link that uh, we sent you as well. Um, and so that okay. link, uh, if you click on that, it will actually automatically apply that discount code. 
Oh, nice. Um, or, okay. you, or you can just manually do it uh, with Leadhead. So I will then, set you know, that up, Leadhead's, in the show notes, and then I'll also put it on our website. So you can go to our website. The link will be there um, that yep. you can click on there, and it'll go directly, and it automatically applies it for you. Yeah, cool. yep, exactly. And it gives you uh, 15% off. Sweet. So pretty sweet on everything. So There you go, Leadhead. That's a nice 15% yeah. off. And we've got the holidays coming up, so it would probably yep. do you well to go ahead and get your holiday shopping done because yeah. go check their website because there's a lot of things on their website, things we haven't even talked about yet that uh, right. you'd probably be interested in. Uh, yeah. They have yeah, a lot of stuff, man. the secure walls, the fire magnets. Uh, they've got bedroom office storage, vault organization. I know at one point in time we were talking about vault doors. Um, yeah. Is that still in the works? It's still in the works. Okay. Yep. Good yep. deal. Not quite ready yet. So, uh, for the lighting, we saw the lighting solutions that they have there. Uh, they've got dehumidifiers, they've got the rod, the silica gel, um, the hygrometers, the gun socks, which I've got yep. gun socks too. They're in my, I've actually, they're in my safe. Um, yeah. I've got several yep. of my more, too. more prized yeah. guns in the gun right. socks. Right. Yeah. Grandpa's guns are yep. in the gun socks. Sure. <laughs> Mine too. My grandpa's yep. and my dad's. That's awesome, man. Uh, and then, of course, the in-play, in-plane sight would make an awesome gift for the holidays. Their yeah. gun locks. The puck, another awesome um, gift that you could gift to yourself or a loved one. Uh, and then their uh, their handgun bolts. So. Yep, yep, exactly. And do you guys have uh, – yeah. do you sell swag? We don't sell any swag, no. Okay. We we have a ton of it, you know, that we just kind of give out, like my hat and I like the hat. Uh, I need you know, one of that those. type of stuff. So, but yeah, I need one of those. Hats. We'll uh, we'll co- we'll throw a couple of those knives in with the with the giveaway. Okay. So well, why don't we add yeah. those as extra? We'll give a couple of uh, the listeners a, a knife too. That way we yeah. spread the love. All right, man. That you want to do good. that? Is that cool? Do that. Sure. Yeah. Let's okay. Do it. All right. So let's pick our winners. Um, how do we want to do this? Do we just want to do like a rando kind of pick, assign a number to everybody, and do a random number generator? Or do you? Yeah, I want like to do that. like best question. Okay. Yeah. So let's look at it. We had. We did have. Uh, we had one guy who gave us a bunch of questions. I feel like we should give him something. Okay. But you want to give him and a then, knife? Uh, we. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, that was. Did uh, he? Did he have specific questions that like the magnets or something or the dehumidifier rod would work for? Uh, I think so. Let's see. Let's go back to that. I don't remember what the specific questions were. Uh, let's see. Flood munitions. Do you offer any way to lock the guns? Right. Um, do you offer any products to organize shorter guns? Yeah, it was one guy that asked like three. B, at least three I think it was questions. B. Hurst. Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Behurst, as far as lighting, he asked about the lighting. He asked about okay. um, best options safe for wall hanging with kids. And he right. asked about the store, the ammo storage in the safe with the dehumidifier, the cans with the packs. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yep. So, yeah, we can uh, we can send him something over. Okay. Uh, it's up to you, man, whatever you think. What about some silica stuff? D- yeah, I'm sure I could do that. Silica and no a knife. He, he's talking yeah. about keeping his stuff yeah. uh, I'll send dry. Him, uh, I'll send him one of these guys over, one of those uh, silica packs. So it's a little five pack in here. So Okay. So that's B. Hurst. Yep. And this goes for all you people that I call on the show as winners today. You have to email me. Let me know what you won. Uh, of course, I'll need your address to forward to Brian. Uh, to give yep. him that too. So, B. Hurst, you won the silica. Uh, and do you say a knife and a hat, or what, or hat, or? Uh, I think we're gonna do the silica and then the little your little baby knife there. Little knife, you got. baby knife. I like that. Yeah. Okay, B. Hurst. Uh, so let's go through and let's do for the um, the hygrometer and the dehumidifier stick now. Yep. Um, so I'm going to go through and assign numbers. So flood munitions is number one. Wait a minute. Let me go back and do this. I'm going to rearrange them that way. Sometimes all of them don't show up if I don't do it in a certain way. So, gotcha. so Pew Pew RN is one. Jesse Bedal. It's Bedo. Sorry. It's Bedo, not Bedal. I always misspell, miss say that. 
You're number two. Rifle Negro. <laughs> that's, that's how I'm saying it. I'm a, I won't offend anybody. Uh, it's three. That's his name. I, I didn't yeah, pick his yeah, name. You didn't choose it. Right. Uh, Shep Guns. And he's got little kids. He he entered a lot of these people entered our uh, AK giveaway that we did too for, oh, nice. for entries. Cool. Uh, your number four, Shep Guns, uh, Ernie Roach. Your number five. Uh, do we want to put B Hurst in here since we already gave him one? We'll leave him out. No, yeah, we'll leave him out. Okay, he we'll give everybody else a chance. Him. Austin yeah, Whalen. Yeah. Howdy, howdy, Austin. He lives in Texas. Um, your number six. And Nikolai Alplanap, which he he used to be AKM Archer. He changed his name again. It's hard to keep up with these people when they start changing their names. He's number seven. Guns, Oil, and Dirt, which that's like a that. <laughs> God acronym. He's got a podcast. You should check him out. I will, man. I'm looking up right now. Yeah, he's Guns, a, Oil, and Dirt. That's cool, man. He's a first responder. He's a good dude. He's number eight. And then Giddy Up, Giddy Up, you're number nine. P Man 301, we had more than I thought we did. Um, you're number 10. And Flood Munitions, he's going to be pissed if, he's, if number one comes up because he was number one a minute ago. You're number 11. John Adams, the third. You're 12. Uh, I think that's got everybody. So as of nice. as of this time, this recording, that's all we have. So if you posted something after this, sorry. Should have been paying attention to your social needs. <laughs> all right. Have you, do you happen to have a random number generator pulled up? Nope, I do not. You pull up your uh, Google you and do it. Pull one up? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be for, I'm going to switch my screen here. The All right, we got twelve, right? We have twelve, one okay. through twelve. Yep, got it. And this is going to be for the digital hygrometer and the dehumidifier rod. Yep. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. We got number eight. Use number eight. God. God. Gun oil and dirt. Gun oil and dirt. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome, man. Cool. So. Contact me, talkingledgmail.com. Tell me what you won uh, in your yeah. address. All right, next we're going to do these awesome magnets. You get a, a gun magnet, a box of gun magnet, and a box of the the rifle magnets. Yep. Which are right here. So the magnums and the, not the LED vault. Where'd the other one go? Yeah, there it is. The, the magnet gun magnet concealment the magnet. gun concealment magnet, yep. There you go. Yep. So yep. another... Random number generator and eight doesn't count. Yep. All right. Here we go. Eleven. Look, there he is. He's glad. He's glad that I went in the opposite <laughs> order. Flood munitions it worked, worked out for him. It man. worked out for him. There you go. Yeah. So you win the yeah. the magnets. And he's one of the people that uh, works at a at a gun store. He works at one of the big box gun stores. Cool. Um, what's it called? Out, um, gosh, I can't remember. That. I got one here in town. Hmm. It's like outdoor warehouse or something like that. Sportsman's outdoor warehouse. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do a lot of business with those guys. Okay, so, there you go. Yep. So, yep. He maybe, probably has some lockdown stuff in that store, actually. He very well might. Uh, now you guys can yep. talk and uh, maybe get a, a wall or something set up for them Love at their to. location. Yep. Yep. So there you go, Flood Man. Uh, email me talking at gmail .com. You won the concealment magnet and should we give away one more of these sure man let's do it let's do it yeah. let's give away another little baby knife just for the hell of it <laughs> i love that little thing man just for the hell of it little yeah. baby knife i dig it um i think this one should go to the person who sent in our jack wagon oh yeah nice so um it's actually jack wagon hero kind of thing hero yeah yeah npr um 
posting that. Yeah, that was great, man. I love that article. That was cool. And it's it just so happens he a- he also asked a question. So giddy up, Jonathan oh, Gallup. Cool. You win a baby knife. So there you go. So he got rewarded for sending in the uh, the Jack Wagon nomination. So nice. More ways for you guys to get involved. If you don't uh, answer questions, send in Jack Wagon nominations, Lead Head Brigade Hero nominations. Uh, sometimes I'll go to the ratings on iTunes and all that and look for comment, you know, uh, feedback mm. on the ratings and stuff that people leave, and I'll pick winners there. I haven't done that in a while. I'll do that uh, in an episode coming up. So. Mm. Very good. There you go, Leadheads. Uh, awesome show, Brian. Thank you so much for taking the yeah, time man. to be on and rewarding our Leadheads with uh, the awesome lockdown products there. And, yeah, man. And the walls. Um, these walls are going to be awesome. Can't wait for you Leadheads to start getting those. Yeah, can't wait to see some photos and stuff and, you know, see how you guys are using them. So see a bunch of ak content on the walls where i think feel like we're lacking on the ak content so. there you go well yeah. you know we've got the ak they're talking about yeah. ak corner right right so yeah. um maybe maybe on the release we'll talk about maybe doing some sort of a contest uh with like the best wall display or something yeah yeah and we'll sure, give man. away we'll give away something but uh 10 yeah. years of educating the uneducated here on the talking lead podcast uh with great guests like brian steer with lockdown uh, providing all the expertise to you leadheads. So if you've got additional questions, you want to get in touch with Brian, how can they get in touch with you, Brian? Yeah, um, so you can either uh, go to lockdown.com and contact us there. We've got an in-house customer service team that does an incredible job. And then if they want to get hold of me, if you know they want to be a secure wall dealer or you know something like that, um, they can just email me at uh, B as in boy, S T E E R E at AOB.com. So there you go. So until then, uh, guys, make sure you go and support those that make this show possible. Uh, And, and friends of the show like lockdown um, that are taking care of you lead heads with the discount codes. You can go to lockdown.com and the code is lead head. You're going to get 15% off. Uh, Go now because Christmas is coming up and, you know, things sell out, you know, that happens yep. during this time of year. So if you right. really are wanting something, needing something, you think it'll make a great gift for a loved one, uh, or maybe a, a, a podcast host, you know, you want to send them something. Uh, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, lockdown <laughs> secure or lockdown. I always say lockdown secure. Uh, that's kind of like yeah, your, so, uh, the hashtag is lockdown secured. Just because during uh, COVID, you know, there was a ton of hashtag lockdown stuff and our stuff just got lost. <laughs> so the hashtag is uh, lockdown secured and then the website's lockdown.com. Lock, so, lockdown.com. Use that code yeah. late head 15% uh, off. Yeah. Then we'll see here in uh, like a week, man. Barely a week and a half. And uh, yeah, that site for that I'm looking event. forward so to it's that. Awesome. Uh, and yeah. then go to Mission First Tactical. Uh, use the code lead head again. You're going to get 20% off at Mission First Tactical. Seal1.com for all your gun cleaning. You know, another way to protect and secure your guns, you know, is with uh, Seal One CLP. It's going to keep the corrosion away uh, and keep them looking good and pretty. And it smells good, too. Go to SealOne.com. Use code LEADHEAD, 25% off. You go to 1776 United. You get uh, our logo T-shirts like I'm wearing today. Uh, Talking Lead logo T-shirt at 1776 United. Use the code Talking Lead. They had to be different. You're going to get 20% <laughs> off at 1776 United. Damn it, James. Um, but yeah, it works on anything on their site, not just our logo stuff. But, hey, rock the uh, Leadhead Brigade logo apparel. Uh, Factory 47 for our AK Corner apparel. Um, shirts, hats. Uh, and you can get his own uh, anything on that website. You're going to get 15% off. Use the code Leadhead. I'm sorry, 10% off. Uh, at Factory 47, and that's Factory with a K, F-A-K-T-O-R-Y 47. For, it's for our AK, you know, fans there. Um, and then a big thanks to IWI and Century Arms for sponsoring the Talking Lead AK Corner this season. They brought that uh, to you, made it possible. we got two more episodes of that, two more months left of the AK Corner, so make sure you're tuning in and paying attention to that. Uh, as well. And then Keltec, you can go to Keltec Weapons. 
Uh, and I was going to show this real quick. You know, I was talking about, you know, we had that question about the, oh, yeah. um, the sub 2000 should have given that guy one for asking that question. Yeah, that was a good idea. Um, let's do that. Who was that? Can we send him a hat or do you want to send him a knife? Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually I have, uh, this like little, uh, multi-tool thing too. Ooh. that I can, I'll send him one of those. Okay. And yeah. that was, yeah. Yeah, let me oh, get, actually, let me grab it real quick. cause it's Brandon Hurst. He already, he already just gave him some, uh, okay. he did all three of those. So he, he definitely did, deserves yeah. Yeah. yeah, throw him a little something extra in there because he really went above and beyond. He did. <laughs> he sure did, man. He did the uh, the the participation questions. He did just the regular old question asking about optics for the sub two thousand, and he did the right. the jack wagon. So perfect. Yeah, man. He's a good lead head right there. That is that is the definition of a lead head brigade member right there. So this is the uh, red line precision uh, aftermarket handguard that you can add to your sub two thousand. So here's the nut, it just twists, and you can see I've got the RMR on there right now. And if I were to let me lock it, break it down, see I can't go all the way. Right. It doesn't let me go all the way. And that's what you're looking at with the the standard thing that comes grip with the with the yeah, man, That's cool. So nice. then you twist it. And then now I've got a rail that I left blank on right. there. And then it just, boom. boom. Complete. That's cool, man. Your backpack, just throw that in your backpack. Yep. You're ready to go. Throw it under your seat. You're ready to go. So, yeah, there it is. I wanted to show that real quick. I love that. All right, Brandon. Or Brandon. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, i got Brandon on my mind. Right, Brian, yeah, man. Brian, again, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Appreciate lockdown. Looking forward to our uh, upcoming training at Gunsight. We're going to have a good time there, and of course, we're going to follow that up, like I said, with a with an episode. Uh, but until then, lead heads, as always, keep your loved ones close and your firearms close. That's what you say. That's what you say. You don't wish for it. <laughs> <laughs> and your firearms close there. And split like this. On a lockdown secure wall. That's right. Use that code, Leadhead, 15% off, lockdown.com, baby.